music of legends Queen, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Metallica, The Who, and more. And best of all, they're performing at your very own first arena. Don't miss these four female violinist vocalists known as the Femmes of Rock on Friday, April 26th. Tickets for the show presented by Guthrie and the Radisson Corning are available at firstarena.net. Top of the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Saturday, March 16th, the Elmira River Sharks return to the first three to take on the defending Commissioner's Cup champion Danbury Hattricks at 6.07 p.m. Be down to the first three for a chance to take home one of the inaugural season jerseys from your Elmira River Sharks. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster.com or by calling the box office 607-734-POP. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fin. You're listening to Elmira River Sharks Hockey. Back to John Clement in the arena. Hello and welcome in here live to the Danbury Ice Arena as your Elmira River Sharks get set to take on the Danbury Hattricks, the defending Commissioner's Cup champions, ready to host yet again. It's a, been the trend now here late in the season. Obviously, Elmira hosted those first six opportunities, and now Danbury getting their chance. I'm John Clement bringing you all tonight's action high above the Danbury Ice Arena as we get set for a big one here to kick off St. Patrick's Day weekend. The River Sharks and Hattricks do battle in a home and home tonight and tomorrow. We'll be right back at the Shark Tank tomorrow night. The River Sharks have snapped their slide in the season series versus the Hattricks after managing to claw back from a 2-0 Danbury lead on Sunday with four unanswered goals to take the season series back to 5-4. The series leaves the Tricks with a 5-4 advantage in the 23-24 set with now just three games remaining, which will be down to just one after tomorrow night. The scheduling was a bit wonky in terms of the division of games as the first five matchups in the history between these two all occurred in Elmira. Now six of the final seven are all occurring here at the Danbury Ice Arena. Elmira kept hold on fourth place with the victory on Sunday. And with Watertown playing only one time this weekend, Elmira playing three games in three nights, this is an opportunity to put the pressure back on the Watertown Wolves. It's playoff time now for the River Sharks as nine of the final 11 games of the season are all against Empire Division foes. As for Danbury, this team has certainly found its stride over the last 10 games as they've won seven in the stretch. Five of their last eight games have all been decided by one goal as this team looks to hit the month of April and find the same magic that gave them the Commissioner's Cup championship last spring. So, of course, a lot to look at here and a couple of roster moves here for the Elmira River Sharks that are going to play a factor here tonight. Sammy Bernard is out. He will hopefully be back tomorrow, but I know he is out for tonight. We will get our first look at Sam Lavecci. Lavecci will make his first start as a River Shark. And another big piece going to be out tonight. Number 95, Stephen Klink, will not be in the lineup. However, we are marking the return of number 22, Dustin Gesso. So we'll see how the River Sharks can fare against the Danbury Hattricks. Never an easy place to play here in the Danbury Ice Arena. But we'll send it down to head coach Tyler Jurich, see what he has to say about tonight's matchup before we get into this one. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Coaches Show live from Mooney Sports Bar and Grill here in Horseheads. Tyler Drish, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know it's a uh, big time of year for you guys as you guys get primed and ready for the postseason. Obviously, four points ahead of Watertown, not the way you wanted to end the weekend, but a huge victory in Danbury, a hard place to play. Uh, what do you attribute to the success of this weekend? Yeah, I think... Um you know, we had a good game Friday. Obviously, you know, Binghamton's a good team. We made some mistakes we don't want to make. Um, our inconsistency kind of still is there, but um, to win the game, being down 2 nothing Sunday, be able to fight back like that um, was a really good sign. So, uh, you know, four points up, we're still up. We control our own destiny, so it's good. Speaking of control your own destiny, obviously four... Well, excuse me, nine big points, three straight games here this weekend. You guys have a great big chance with Watertown only playing once to kind of put a big margin between you and the uh, the fifth place team. Yeah, no. Um, you know, when you get a chance to, to kind of pull away, I guess you could say, you got to take advantage of it. Obviously, Danbury, Danbury, Binghamton is tough, but this division is tough. It, it's a tough schedule for everybody, so, you know, we got to play the games that are on the schedule. 
that being said, you guys have played Danbury, Danbury very well this season, uh, and part of that has to be attributed, obviously, to the heroic efforts of uh, Sammy Bernard back in between the pipes. 60 huge stops the other night. Um, obviously, I'm sure you'd want the defense to tighten up a little bit more on that, but when you look at that type of uh, that type of save rate and save percentage, you have to be happy with the goaltending right now. Yeah, obviously, you can't say enough about Sammy. He's been nothing short of spectacular, so... Um, but the shots were 62-56, so if it was like 62-20, I'd be a little more upset. But it was just one of those Federal Hockey League games, so um, well goaltended. But, um, yeah, Sammy's been great. We uh, couldn't thank him enough for a lot of his performances. Well, speaking of which, obviously you talked about the schedule already. Danbury, Holm, Binghamton, all in a three-day span. Uh, plenty of time on the uh, on the big iron line, if you will. Uh, you guys have had a very home-heavy early schedule, and now that you're in the late part of the season and you're down to your final three home games, two after this weekend, uh, what are you kind of sitting to the guys about getting out on the road and, and kind of what's enjoyable about the road, especially considering most of these trips are just really kind of there and back trips? Yeah, I'm pretty sure a record might actually be better on the road, so I can't really complain <laughs> with it. And obviously, you know, the beginning of the year team with the brand new team, I, I think there's one guy remaining, so... Um, you know, that first half really, it is what it is. So since um, that Columbus trip we were talking, we're uh, game over 500. So in a tough division, so I think we're uh, we're happy in the direction we're going toward playoffs. And speaking of which, obviously, you know, you talk about the division. One non-divisional matchup left, and it's a week from today. We're going to head out to uh, Port Huron, Michigan for the final out-of-division trip of the season. How much more do these three games this weekend against not only divisional opponents, but one team that's directly in front of you in the standings, right. how much more do they need? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we still could to finish in third place. Um, you know, we play Binghamton and Motor City in the playoffs. You know, they're, they're both good teams. So, obviously, the higher you get in the standings, the better. So, very important games for us. And, you know, we played well against them. They're a good team, though. So. For sure. Now, obviously, again, a big home game again this weekend as the uh, the fans in First Arena have been showing up, uh, getting things going here for the last couple of weeks. Uh, from a player's perspective, we talked about it earlier in the season, what a difference it makes to have that place bumping and, and the way that it reverberates and the way that you guys feel it. Uh, from the coaching aspect, though, now really getting to see it again, starting to remember uh, what it's like to see all that. What's it been like for you as a coach to hear the fans back behind you and doing the things they used to do? Yeah, like I said, um, last coach's show, the, the more packed it is, the more you know energized our team is. I think that's kind of just a natural thing. So we like to see it packed every night. I don't, I don't know why it isn't. It should be. So, yeah, that's about all I have to say about that. I don't know, I don't know why it's not packed every night. <laughs> what, what is everybody doing? Please come out and support these guys. They work their butts off. Um, you know, we went to Elmira College game. We saw a lot of posts on Facebook. Go support them. We went and supported them, as did the rest of Elmira. So um, we would like to support back as well. Um, they work very hard every day, so um, they appreciate it. Speaking of which, the weather getting warmer. You don't need to bundle up to come to the arena. That's so it's so nice jump. to come on down. And, and actually, pretty often there. Yeah? yeah. Nice. Well, see here, that. Get a chance to get the air conditioning yeah. without paying for it. Yeah, amazing. You know the nice thing, bills are high. Crazy. So I'd yeah. love to see that. And uh, obviously, you know, a great time to be had at the first arena. But now again, as you focus on uh, on things, the trade deadline is passed. The major moves uh, that can be made have been made. You've acquired a roster that you're ha you're presumably happy with right now. Uh, what is it that these fans need to keep a lookout for here as the uh, tail end of the season really approaches? we got five weeks left. Yeah, I mean, I kind of treated the... Uh since January 1st is a trade deadline trying to put the pieces together and um, I, you know obviously you always want to better your team but the pieces are um, kind of what we wanted and it's, it's nice to have um, everybody has a role and they're flourishing in it um, and now getting Cameron full time and Powell full time and just so um, it's even, even more veteran presence we have with our team that we didn't have so it's great and the veteran presence can't be ignored obviously a Justin Gisso was unavailable last weekend, but he'll be back in the lineup this weekend. Cameron Yarwood getting back in the lineup on a regular basis, and then you know Kyle Powell, who since he's come in, has been able to provide that veteran presence on the back end. How much of a difference does that make uh, for 
our young team as we talk about all year. Yeah, it's it's a huge difference. It goes back to why I brought PV in, why we have why we brought Frankie in. Um, you know, it, it, that was, those veteran guys around the young guys makes a big difference. It makes them the younger guys more comfortable with everything. Um, it's just it's just the presence. So uh, it's it seems to be working. I wanted to ask you too, since we're talking about the roster, a couple of collegiate players have come in and immediately made an impact. Uh, De Blasio got himself on the score sheet. Newman now has almost equaled his collegiate total in just about a week and a half since joining the squad uh, in his professional debut. And you look up and down the roster, everybody you brought in, I mean, how much went into scouting those guys, getting ready to, to bring them on board? And, and what's that process like for people who don't know? Yeah, I mean, Newman has been just a, an absolute treat to have, just a work workhorse out there. And he's brought a different dynamic to our, to our team and you know, he created a, another top line for us. Um, so s scouting wise, he was sent to us by, by a player and then the other guys were too. And then um, Coleman was brought to us by um, one of my colleagues that I do, uh, we do players together. So, um, you know, there's a lot of work being put into this and it's pretty clear that it's, it's working. So um, we have intentions of being a winning team and doing well in the playoffs. So. Speaking of being a winning team, obviously you guys are on the right path right now. You're in a playoff spot for the moment, looking forward, trying to get uh, to the next level, and obviously what that does in the playoff, everything resets. Um, is that kind of the message right now that you're talking about, we need to get there, and then everything's open and on the table? Yeah, I think um, playing meaningful games for you know two months going to the playoffs is, is huge, rather than just going to the playoffs, knowing you clinched a playoff spot however long ago. I think this is good for them. They kind of get the playoff feel before they get there, so the nerves are a little lessened. When you talk about that getting the playoff feel early, I mean, you've been on teams that have clinched forever before the playoffs. You've been on teams that clinched the last day of the regular season. Um, is it more of an advantage to be playing these meaningful games right now, or is it more of a disadvantage yeah. for a team like Binghamton? I think you watch any sports for, I mean, you use baseball, MLB, for example. The teams that finish in a wild card seem to be the teams that go to the World Series because they're playing those meaningful games. So I think that's the same for us. Um, so I'm excited for these guys have been gamers. Sometimes they don't have the best practices or warm up or <laughs> games, but ultimately when it's a big game and we have to get the job done like Sunday, they find a way. So that's a good sign. Awesome. And now, of course, again, you're looking at the rest of the season. It's very short order of the home games. You've got a Saturday night this week, a Saturday night in a couple of weeks, and then a Wednesday night, and that's the end of the season for you here in the Elmira area. Um, when you look at that, home ice, we've had our struggles there throughout the season, but when you look at that, how do you turn home ice into the advantage that it has been in the past? Yeah, I mean, we've had the bigger crowds lately. I mean, it's, um, they're all, no matter how many people are in there, they're always electric, which is great. Um, but like I said, they've been working hard all year. You know, they, they really should have a, a full arena for the team we are. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the whole point of home ice. Playing in that building when it's packed is not easy. So, um, you know, yeah. We'll take one more of the fun questions before we, uh, we get going here. But obviously, you know, the season's winding down. The weather's getting a little bit nicer. Obviously, a lot of you guys got shorts on here tonight. So uh, so what's the favorite team off of ice activity when you guys get a chance to go out there and then explore uh, explore Elmira? Do you show them where to go or what, what do you do? No, I think uh, guy like Blake Peavy has it under control. He's been here before. <laughs> it seems that, that golf is their, uh, their, their main source of fun, which is good. They're dressed, they're dressed it, so you can tell they went. They are. I was going to say. <laughs> is there a particular course you would recommend? I think there's only one open right now. I don't <laughs> I don't know. We'll let, we'll let Blake take care of that. He's, okay. got, he's got it locked down for them, the fun, the fun committee. So. Yeah. All right. Well, big thank you for Tyler Jurich for joining us for a coach's show back at Mooney's this past Wednesday night. What a great time, as always, as it always is down there. And again, we are getting set for a big matchup here as the River Sharks and Hattrick set to do battle. The Hattricks in the St. Paddy's Day green jerseys will skate left to right across the ice, and the River Sharks in the whites will skate right to left. Starting goaltender, the, again, the debut of Sam Levecci. He is 8-2-1 on the season, a 3.55 goals against an 8.93 save percentage. He'll face off with Connor McCullum, 20-10-3 on the year, 3.21 goals against 9.13 save percentage, and a shutout on the season. Again, he was a tough competitor on Sunday, despite giving up the four unanswered goals. River Shark's going to have to be sharp tonight. 
Starting lineup for Elmira, Pozar and Yarwood on defense. Parker, Peavy, and Elijah Wilson up front. Couple of key scratches. Not gonna have Kyle Powell in the lineup. Not gonna have Stephen Klink in the lineup tonight. Hopefully both will be back for tomorrow night's matchup, but this is a big game for Elmira. Have to find a way to come away with a victory here tonight. The opposing lineup, Corey Cunningham, Johnny Ruiz, Daniel McKittrick up front. Kyle Gonzalez makes his return. Xavier Abdella on the defense. When we come back, it's time for Puck Drop. You're listening to River Sharks Hockey here on Mixler.com, your home for River Sharks Hockey all season long. They sing, they string, featuring the music of Legends Queen, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Metallica, The Who, and more. And best of all, they're performing at your very own first arena. Don't miss these four female violinist vocalists known as the Femmes of Rock on Friday, April 26th. Tickets for the show presented by Guthrie and the Radisson Corning are available at firstarena.net. Top of the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Saturday, March 16th, the Elmira River Sharks return to the first three to take on the defending Commissioner's Cup champion Danbury Hatchers at 6.07 p.m. Be down to the first three for a chance to take home one of the inaugural season jerseys from your Elmira River Sharks. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster.com or by calling the box office 607-734-POP. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fin. For more than a century, You've counted on Arnett Health, and Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do, because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients, focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. A beautiful rendition of the national anthem as we get set for hockey. As I said, a Friday night affair that's going to see these two teams compete the next two nights. Hattricks, River Sharks. The River Sharks without a player who has netted them a big seven goals, 11 assists, 18 total points for Stephen Klink against the Danbury Hattricks. He will be sorely missed tonight. Dustin Jesso, however, making his return to the lineup We'll be keeping an eye on number 22 back in the River Shark lineup. But to start this one off, Elijah Wilson, Blake Peavy, Brett Parker. This has been a line that has been gritty, grinding, and hard to play against for any team in the FPHL. As I said, Danbury with those St. Patrick's Day green jerseys will skate left to right across your YouTube screen. The River Sharks in the visiting whites will skate right to left. So a big game here for Elmira as they try to extend their four-point playoff lead. Never an easy task, especially against a team like the Hattricks who came up with a victory last, excuse me, came up with a early point last time. Two big goals, a 2-0 lead before the River Sharks were able to come away with the victory with four unanswered goals of their own. But the season series still belongs to the Danbury Hattricks right now. Five to four, a chance to tie it up. We'll see if Elmira can figure it out. Puck is down, Danbury wins the opening draw. It's one back, and Kyle Gonzalez back into the Danbury Hattricks line and moves that puck along. Abdella flips it ahead, and now Pozar will turn and chase. Pozar back behind his own net, harassed by Ruiz, sends it ahead as Brett Parker gets it to center ice. Quick change here as Cody Rogers hops over the board. For Wilson, he's gonna play up front tonight, apparently. Kyle Gonzalez quickly back the other way. Back into the zone comes Danbury towards the front, broken up, stopped there by Lavecchi, and he gets his start here tonight. 19.33 to go in the first period. 0-0 game. Cameron Yarwood having a bit of a laugh. Jesso Gaeta and Newman out there. This will be an interesting line to watch. Trevor Newman, since coming in, has, we talked about it on Wednesday night, and you'll hear that in one of the intermissions. Uh, Trevor Newman has almost equaled his collegiate total for the year in about a third of the game since joining the River Sharks. He's played just seven games. 
as that faceoff dropped, and the River Sharks not going to be happy about that. Thrown towards the net, turned aside by Lavecchi. Back behind as Danbury keeps possession deep in the zone. Trying to work it around, shot towards the net. On doesn't quite make it through, and now it's sent into the corner. De Blasio trying to chase it back down. De Blasio now wearing number 21. Trying to hustle this puck out. Moving it along is Jesso. Jesso takes it back behind. He's harassed right back towards the front as that one's taken away and moved back out as it's pulled away again by Danbury, but the puck works its way back to center ice. Back to play it yet again. Bedard trying to move it along. Right back again. Danbury trying to play this puck around. They dump it back in, and Bedard cannot handle it. It'll roll all the way back to McCullum. McCullum up the sideboards, able to keep it there for a moment, was Gesso trying to settle that puck down, and he cannot. Turn back towards center ice as Newman in there trying to take care of it and cannot. Turning around is Yarwood, swiping at it and sends that puck into the corner as, again, that puck poke checked ahead and out of the zone, but nobody can control. Gesso trying to chase that puck down, but Danbury takes it back deep in their own zone. It's Pamela and wrapping it around the boards. All the way around for LaBelle. LaBelle. Throws it back towards center ice. A little attempted kick, but can't control the puck again. It does finally get moved out by Danbury. Played off by Yarwood and turned around. Trying to move this puck ahead is Davidson. Darius Davidson shoots that puck into the corner. Dominic Dumas comes up to play it, gets it out to Davidson. He tries to pull one towards the net, but can't. Back behind, and Dumas trying to lay the body. Referee kicked that puck accidentally as that puck's moved back to center ice. And again, trying to hustle it out. Falanga could not come up with it. It's sent back to center ice, and Dustin Henning will dump. Lebecci out to play, lets that one go. Big contact right by the bench as Darius Davidson was taken down right into Lebecci. And he's trying to signal his defense as that puck's picked off again. Hattricks towards the front, kick save, another shot and another save, Lebecci. Move back out and Elijah Wilson will take care of it. Elijah Wilson hustling it out of the zone, gets the red line and dumps it all the way around. Brett Parker on the chase, trying to chase it down deep into the zone, but it's flipped up back towards the blue line and out of the zone. Some trouble for Danbury playing it. As again, trying to get there is Wilson. He's run off, and that puck is dumped right back in. 17.26 left to go in the period. Gonzalez moves that puck back to center. And Danbury able to dump and control the puck again. McKittrick chasing it, dumps it off again. Big hit along the sideboards as Cunningham tried to play. Picked off by Elmira, sent back behind the net. Back to get it goes de Blasio, moving it ahead. Banked off the boards and back to center. Ratcliffe can't control. Ratcliffe. Back ahead for Danbury, 0-0 game. Into the zone comes Cunningham, pass across, doesn't settle and couldn't get that one to go. Right back towards the front, as excellent work again. Shot towards the net, kick save there by Lavecchi and he's gonna cover up, taking no chances. As with 16.54 to go, Almira under a little bit of fire here. Has to find a way to get things going. So quick change for head coach Tyler Jurich, brings back out the Gaeta. Newman Gesso line. Pozar Yarwood back out there defensively. Gesso waits for the draw. He's going to line up against Chase Harwell. Harwell almost goes down there. That puck one towards the front of the net. Picked off there by Almira. Looking out towards center. That puck sent. LaBelle touched it. That should have been no icing as LaBelle clearly got a stick on that. But the puck will come all the way back to the Almira zone. 16.46 left to go. As again, Almira with some work to do here. Getting out shot 3 0 at the moment. Harwell and Gesso set to go again. As the linesman pushing back the wingers. Now it's dropped. One back by Almira. Gesso able to come away with that one cleanly. Back behind, it's Yarwood flipping it out to center ice. Trying to send it for Gesso, who can't come up with it. It's sent back into his own zone. Jesso, quick turnaround here as he tries to hustle it out of the zone, gets it to his blue line, turning it around, fakes a pass. Now it's chopped away from him and moved up to Pozar. Pozar up to Newman who touches that and it goes all the way down. Back behind McCullum, wraps it around the boards. Trying to hustle it out is the hat tricks. They get it to center ice and immediately it's turned back around. Jesso has Gaeta with him. It's poke checked away and back the other way comes Ratcliffe. Quick change for the hat River Sharks now as LaBelle breaks in. Throws it towards the net, and that one's broken up immediately. Sent back towards center ice, but nobody there to get it. Xavier Abdella will pick it up for Danbury and send it across to his defensive partner. Flip back ahead. Harwell, right back into the zone. Ratcliffe couldn't control, and that'll be turned away by Lavecchi. Sends it right back to the neutral zone. Couldn't quite make it there, as again, Amara digging. Right back out. It's dumped back and played off here by Gonzalez. Gonzalez right up the boards, sending that puck down. That goes all the way in. Should be and will be icing. 15.42 to go here in the first period. Again, the River Sharks being outshot three to nothing, but as of right now, no damage on the board. Dominic Dumas set to take the draw. 
as the Sharks looking for something offensive themselves. Been a little hard to come so far as Dumas waits. Again, puck is dropped. Barry trying to win that one back. Elmira will. Turned around by Elijah Wilson. Wilson goes back to the point. Looking, he's got Pozar with him. Decides to dump it into the corner instead. Down four, trying to play it off his Dumas. He's pinned to the boards and kicks that puck, but can't control. William Barry going to chase it down. Moves it back up the sideboards and right back to him. Barry over the red line. Passes off. Again back to Barry. Towards the front. Backhand shot. And that is turned aside by Lavecchi. Trying to move that puck right back up quickly. Almira gets it through the neutral zone. Dumping that puck all the way in on McCollum. He will stop it and cover it up. And I believe that will not allow Danbury to make a change. Almira will be allowed but will not take advantage. 15-10 to go here in the first period as we are ticking down towards the first media time. No, they are going to allow Danbury to make changes. I didn't think they were going to be allowed to as the goaltender covered that one up on a shot from the neutral zone, but okay, here we go. Once again, puck is won back by Ruiz. Pamelan comes up with it, trying to turn it around quickly. Pamelan looks up ice, passes it to the sideboards as it's dumped back in, trying to play it through. Pass across for Ruiz, and he could not get his stick on it. Moving it back out the other way, here comes Almira, taken away quickly by Tetro, and turning it around is Pamelan. Trying to knock it back down. De Blasio couldn't get there. Therefore, with it wrapping around the backside of the boards is Coleman. Couldn't control again towards the net, turned aside. That one might have hit off the hat trick right in front. That was McKittrick. Worked back down low again. Trying to throw it towards the net, and another cover up there by Lavecchi. And we will go to our first media timeout. 0-0, Elmira and Danbury. We'll be back after this. They sing, they string. Featuring the music of Legends Queen, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Metallica, The Who, and more. And best of all, they're performing at your very own first arena. Don't miss these four female violinist vocalists known as the Femmes of Rock on Friday, April 26th. Tickets for the show presented by Guthrie and the Radisson Corning are available at firstarena.net. Off the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Saturday, March 16th, the Elmira River Sharks return to the first three to take on the defending Commissioner's Cup champion Danbury Hattricks at 6.07 p.m. Be down to the first three for a chance to take home one of the inaugural season jerseys from your Elmira River Sharks. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster.com or by calling the box office 607-734-POP. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fan. All right, with that, we are back. Puck won back by Elmira. Flip back towards center ice, and it will clear the zone. Tetro chasing after it. On him is Brett Parker trying to get there. Could not. Wrapped around the boards for Danbury. Trying to move this puck back ahead. It's Cunningham with it up the side boards on the far side. Hustling it back out now right over the center ice dot. Dropping a pass to Ruiz. Right back to Cunningham. Shot goal. Danbury will open the scoring. As we wait for that one, Danbury does start the scoring here and makes it one nothing. So we'll get a look again at the replay here momentarily. Just a little too smooth as Johnny Ruiz adding an assist, his 27th of the season as we are back underway. I thought we were gonna get a replay there, did not. My apologies as that puck's turned back around by Danbury. Trying to hustle it back up, it's LaBelle. Flipping that puck ahead as Ratcliffe will touch. Dumping that puck in and Coleman there for it. Moves that puck back behind for de Blasio. De Blasio gets it, wraps it off the boards and hustling it out is Gesso. Moved along, three on two if Elmira hurries. Gesso couldn't control. Turned back the other way, it's Charlie Bedard. Bedard firing that puck through the neutral zone. Stopping that one is Coleman. Coleman turns and looks. Flipped ahead looking for Gaeta. Gaeta gets onside, hustling after it and that will be an icing call. So as little confusion here on my board as we're 13.47 left to go and I apologize for the time there. Got that fixed for you, 13.47 left to go. It's a one nothing Danbury lead. Again, Danbury did get in front on Sunday and Elmira was able to respond. Don't want to fall behind by two though. Coleman back behind. 
Trying to play this puck ahead. It's flipped through the neutral zone. Touched there by Newman, so no icing all the way down. McCollum back to play. Newman was racing after it, but couldn't quite get there as Danbury looks to turn that puck back around. Hustling it out. It's knocked down there. Pushed ahead. And this is going to be touched by Gaeta, which will be a hand pass. So with 13.27 left to go, faceoff will come back to the neutral zone. Gaeta was a little confused there post-whistle, but... <laughs> Again, 13.27 to go there right outside the offensive zone as Wilson, Dumas, and Darius Davidson back out here as that puck drop. Gonzalez moves it along quickly. Almira trying to get some offensive zone possession. Has had some trouble with that here tonight. Move back into the zone by Falanga. Taken off the puck. Banked off the boards but can't clear it. Elijah Wilson battling but couldn't come up with the puck. Back again, a shot over the top of the net as Davidson was trying to chase it down, could not get there. Sam, Cam Yarwood was looking for a chance to wrap towards the front shot, goal. <laughs> and I just said you don't want to give Danbury too much breathing room. But Di Nicola walked right in. Here's the replay. You see the wraparound attempt off of the goaltender right out to Di Nicola, who tucks it in handily. And now Almira's got a huge amount of work to do. 13.03 left to go and a 2 0 deficit. Johnny Ruiz back out here for the faceoff. Matches up with Peavy. Peavy does win it back. As that's moved along again, Coleman passes across. De Blasio moving, moving that puck ahead. Dumped down in, chasing after it. McCollum will put a stop on that, wraps it around the boards, all the way to the blue line, kept there by Elmira. Flipped directly up in the air, back towards McCollum, and he will put a stop on that. 12.46 left to go in the first period, and a 2-0 Danbury lead. As now again... Faceoff going to come back down deep in the Elmira offensive zone. Only two shots on goal so far here tonight. As Jesso trying to win a faceoff. He ties his man up, but Danbury wins the draw. Back behind it's LaBelle. LaBelle moving it up quickly for McKittrick. McKittrick into the offensive zone. Cuts through right through the middle. A shot deflected into the corner. As that one's chased down to Blasio. Poke checks it, gets it ahead. And now Jesso gets it through the neutral zone. Pushing it ahead, but LaBelle able to turn it around, and that'll go all the way down. They say no icing, so back again to get it. De Blasio playing it back. Coleman looking up ice. Coleman trying to stick handle his way through the zone. Can't turn back around. Little drop pass. Johnny Ruiz with it now taken away from him. Excellent work there by the Elmira defense. Looking towards the neutral zone. Banked ahead for Gesso. Dustin Gesso into the zone looking. Shooting deflected up and into the netting. So 12.08 left to go here. As there's the announcement again, Di Nicola was the one who scored that Danbury goal. And the River Sharks, a bit of a hole now, as with 12.08 to go, Almira still work to do. Talked about it, you don't want to give up a big lead to Danbury, as again that puck moved back through, trying to keep it in the zone, but cannot. That puck's flipped out past Yarwood. Pozar going to chase it back down. Pozar off the near side boards, deflected, looking for a man, can't find anyone. Now it's moved in by Dominic Dumas. Dumas cutting down low, looking towards the front, deflected right out in front, and Davidson couldn't find it. Back out, Danbury trying to hustle, and they do, but an excellent work again by the Elmira center there, if you will, as that's Elijah Wilson, who's had to play a few positions already here tonight. Pozar coming away with it, trying to move it ahead, but it's stripped from him. Pozar has to turn around and chase. Pozar back into the corner, he's rubbed in hard. No call coming on that. And the River Sharks weren't happy about that at all. Looking for it, it's deflected through the slot area and now hustled out the other way. Trying to play it ahead, Dumas chasing it into the zone. He will get there. Dumas along the far side boards, tried to one-timer, couldn't find it. Back to Coleman at center. Coleman turns and looks. Dumps that puck in, the River Sharks get on side and will make a change. Quick changes here for head coach Tyler Jurich. Pamela Ann back to play. Pamela Ann takes it behind his own net. Only one man deep, down to 11 minutes to go here in the first period of play. Up to nothing, the hat trick's trying to move that puck along. It's worked back out to center. Cody Rogers will come up with it. Rogers trying to get around a man. Does, dumps that puck down in deep, right back towards the slot. Weird carom off the boards. As that one's deflected back to center ice, picked off there, and dumped back along by de Blasio. Cody Rogers trying to turn. 
Rogers trying to kick it along, gets it back again, and now it'll be picked off. Trying to move it out, the former Watertown Wolves captain, Dustin Henning, he gets it to the River Shark zone, but it's right back out to center ice where Gonzalez will pick it up. Kyle Gonzalez back to his defensive partner. Xavier Abdella moving it ahead up to Falanga. Falanga turning, looking. Passes it across, looking for Gonzalez. Gonzalez has some trouble. Peavy can't come up with it either. Peavy tries to move it along and will get it back to his own defense. Turning around, Coleman with a pass across. Some effort there by Rogers, dumps it back to center ice. And now it's moved along by de Blasio. Tried to get it to Gisseau and could not. Elmira trying to make changes, but Gisseau will go back and get the puck. Gisseau turning around. Dustin Gisseau hustling it through the defensive zone, right back through the neutral zone. Sidesteps one defender, looks, shoots right through the legs, but couldn't get it. Rebound bounces in the corner, trying to play it back, but nobody there. Gisseau's stick was broken, and now it's played out again. Ruiz with it. Quickly back out of the zone. Di Nicola looking for a lane. Takes it himself, and he'll dump that puck down deep. Pozar keeping an eye on Johnny Ruiz. Sends that puck ahead to Gisseau. Gisseau looks up ice, fires it along. As into the zone comes Newman, but it's poke checked away from him back the other way. Here comes Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe has three River Sharks to deal with, and he'll turn off. Back behind, poke checking that one into the corner as Cunningham continues to move the puck right out towards the front, broken up. Back to the point, deflected around. And now again, Newman right on him, trying to move that puck, getting it back to the blue line, but again, failing to clear. Pozar there for it. Nine minutes and four seconds left to go here in the first period. Move back along, it's Harwell. Harwell, with some trouble controlling, sends that puck back for LaBelle. LaBelle moves over the center ice zone, dumps a pass, looking for a lane, shot, deflected by Lavecchi. That puck rides that puck around the rails, and again, Danbury will keep zone time. Moving that puck along, it's worked out and hustling out the other way. Here comes Elijah Wilson, taking advantage of a chain shot, and it goes just wide. Wilson was right there for it, dumps that puck back in as Heggy, or Hedgy, my apologies. Dumps that puck back in. Pamelayan is there, moving that puck along, trying to get it up to Woolley. Woolley with a little drop pass now. Move back out to center ice. It's Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe into the offensive zone. Looks for a lane. Passes back. Finds his man. Gets it right back. Ratcliffe taking it to the sideboards again as he looks for the defense, which is doing figure eights. Dumped down low. Bedard is taken off. Hedgy trying to get up, but can't. Move back out as that'll be picked off by Darius Davidson. Davidson with time. Breaks out of the zone. Eight minutes, eight seconds left to go in the first period. In, three on two. Davidson with a shot, glove save. And that was too easy for the netminder. We'll take us to the second media timeout. It's two nothing Danbury. And we'll see if Elmira can find a way back after this. For more than a century, you've counted on Arnett Health. And Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients, focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are, it's what we do. Trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain-free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x-ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and sure smile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607-733-6825 today. All right, with that, we are back as the River Sharks trying to find something, anything offensive. They'll make a quick change here as it's Dumas, Davidson, and Wilson up front. Yarwood and Pozar on the backside. Dumas trying to win a draw quickly here. 8.03 remaining as the referee having a discussion with the Danbury coach, that one won back, kept into the corner by Davidson, but immediately picked back up by Tetro. Gets it back to center ice. Easy play there for Falanga. Falanga looking ahead, dumps that puck all the way down, and chasing after it, Pozar. Pozar trying to wrap it around the boards and cannot. He gets tied up, moved along, big hit along the sidewall. Davidson overskates the puck right back towards the front. Excellent chip. Good work there by Cameron Yarwood. Moving that puck back along. Danbury trying to set it back up as they move that puck down. It's Falanga. Falanga across to the middle. Broken up. Big hit as that'll be turned out. Here comes Darius Davidson. Davidson over the red line. Dumping that puck in but can't control. Right back to center ice. It's picked off and Elmira will have to work it back around. Coleman with it. Coleman into the zone. 
cuts wide, throws it towards the net, and that's deflected into the corner now as Newman pinches in, fresh off the bench. Turning around, Darius Davidson, shot! Blocker to side and up and into the netting. So, 7-12 left to go here, and the Elmira River Sharks starting to buzz a little bit. We'll see if they can find a way to put one past McCullum. A long look here. Gaeta, Gesso, and Newman. Looking for a possibility here. Gesso gets set, wins that puck back. Knocked down by Coleman, rolled around the boards. Back to get it is Gaeta. Davide Gaeta looking towards the front, broken up. Gaeta gets there, poke checks at it and falls down. Back behind, Coleman wrapping it around the boards. Newman with it behind the net. Newman circles up, but has that puck taken away by Bedard. Dumped back below for LaBelle. Wrapped around the boards again as Cunningham going to come up with it. Trying to poke check it away. Newman does come away with it, throws it towards the net, and it goes just wide. Gesso is there for it, but it's poke checked away from him by Ruiz. Sent to center and knocked back down again. De Blasio off of the board, sending that puck ahead. De Blasio chasing after it. It's sent back to center ice and cut off there by Trevor Newman. Newman dumps that puck right back in, and LaBelle will get it back. Six and a half to go in the first period. Sent back out towards center ice. Actually played back into Ruiz. Ruiz sends that puck back. Bedard dumping that puck all the way down. Trying to chop it down. A little trouble there for the netminder, Levecci. Again, making his River Shark debut. Looking ahead, it's Yarwood. Yarwood fires that puck out to center ice. Trying to knock it down and does. Three on two again. Shot coming through as the little dipsy doodle there for Cody Rogers. Didn't do much of anything to fake out anybody as Rogers now gets the puck back in the corner. He's tied up and pinned there. Moved back out by Harwell. Harwell sends it away. Back out to center ice. Chopped off and now Brett Parker turns it around. Parker breaking in with Cody Rogers. Parker trying to cut wide and does. Sends it back towards the point. Yarwood was spinning off. And now that puck will be dumped all the way back into the River Shark zone as they had to exit. Yarwood back for it. Banks it off the boards. Therefore, it is de Blasio. Dumps it back behind. And Yarwood has turned off. Back behind is Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe with it. Dumps it off again. And now Elmira will hustle out of the offense or defensive zone. My apologies. PV sending it ahead. Picked off there by Cody Rogers. Rogers turns. Trying to find a lane. He still keeps possession on that puck. Rogers dumps it in and will go for a line change right in on the netminder who turns it aside to Pamelaian. Dominic Dumas was racing in there trying to get something done. Last 5.17 of the first period. Trying to move it back in. Danbury will dump that puck in. Levecchi puts a stop on that and will cover it up, taking no unnecessary risk. 5.10 to go here in the first. So the River Sharks trailing 2 nothing here. Shots on goal have been tightened up a little bit, but Elmira's going to have to find a way to get something past the netminder, Connor McCullum, who has been sharp as a tack against Elmira all season long. Waiting for the puck to drop. As now that goes down, picked off, and Elmira will hustle it out the other way. Trying to work through it, Darius Davidson. He breaks in the offensive zone, trying to get around Abdella now. Poke checking that puck forward. He takes a stick up high, and he's going to draw a penalty. So with 5.02 to go... Darius Davidson, I think he's bleeding too. This might be four. We'll see. Waiting to see what comes of this, but again, four, four minutes. So this will be a double minor, 5.02 to go as the River Sharks gonna get a big chance here. Four minute penalty up on the boards, 5.02 to go in the period. And Elmira has to find a way to get the power play to connect here. Yarwood just so. As I'm not sure what is going on here. I. Okay, there we go. Now they've got it squared away. So, Wilson, Newman, Gaeta, Yarwood, and Jusso. So a big power play here for the River Sharks. Puck is down, one back by Danbury. Lifted stick gets it back behind. Rolled around the boards. Yarwood there for it. Yarwood dumps it back down low. Newman trying to play it off, but it's taken away from him. LaBelle will slap it out, and that'll go 200 feet. Levecchi hustling for it. Power play for the River Sharks, 18.7% against the 80.9% of the penalty kill for Danbury. 338 left to go here. As, again, Danbury, not somebody you can take advantage of. They don't sit back. They continue to attack despite being short a man. Picking it off, Gisso trying to move it along. Picked up by McKittrick instead, and now Wilson will have to go back to play. Sends it back. Cameron Yarwood looking up the ice. Sends it ahead. It's dumped back in, and that will be deep in the corner. Newman trying to get there. He and Bedard racing after it. 
gets it up to LaBelle. LaBelle will put it 200 feet down, and Danbury will make some changes. Lavecchi out to play. Has Yarwood racing back. 3.07 left to go in the power play. 4.08 to go in the period. Hustling it out, it's Gisseau moving it ahead quickly. Right back towards the offensive zone, Cameron Yarwood. Deking his way through center ice. Peavy comes up with it, looking back. Trying to take it across, Gisseau will dump it down around the boards as Darius Davidson tries to get there. Lifts a stick but can't come up with it. Now it's taken back behind by Rogers. Sent to the point. Gisseau comes up with it, looking around. Passes down for Cody Rogers. Rogers looking back. Has Yarwood. Yarwood begging for the one-timer, but he's not going to take it now. Yarwood gets possession, sends it back down low. Looking for somebody. No one in front of the net. Yarwood with it. Looking across. Rogers fakes the shot, sends down to Gisseau. Gisseau back to Rogers. Rogers across. Yarwood fakes a shot again. Back to the point to Rogers. Winds, fires, deflected through. Can't get the extra tip. 2.22 to go in the power play, but still in the zone. Darius Davidson with it again. Yarwood has to go for a change, deflected into the corner. And now Rogers gets there. Rolls it around the boards. Gisseau has to turn. He will keep. Gisseau still with it. Fires it back down low. Trying to move that puck along. It's sent back below the goal line. Cody Rogers shoved into the boards hard. Rogers trying to move that puck along. Almira does come up with it. It's Peavy. Peavy swaps sides with Gisseau. Sends across. Back to the point to Peavy. Blake Peavy looking back to Gisseau. Gisseau fires and it's a glove save. With 2.53 to go, that should take us to the media timeout. So final media timeout of the period. We'll be back after this. Elmira still trailing 2-0. We're in the second part of this double minor penalty. Ready for a financial blow up? Look no further than Ingersoll Rand Federal Credit Union. We've got great rates for your life. Whether it's for your dream home or a new ride, we've got your back. Easily access your IRFCU accounts with our mobile app. View balances, deposit checks, and move money with just a tap. Your money, your way. Here at IRFCU, we are committed to our community through our financial education programs in schools and free financial counseling for members in need. We're building a stronger community together. Frisbee Welding LLC in Spencer, New York is partnering with the River Sharks this season. They're a local family-owned company that manufactures hay feeding and handling equipment, as well as a dealer for over 40 equipment lines for everything from large farming operations to your hobbyists and homesteaders. They offer top-of-the-line equipment and more economical versions to fit your needs. Find them on Facebook or call or text Chris at 607-422-0820 for your landscaping, construction, agriculture, snow removal, forestry, and sportsman's attachments and equipment need. All right, we are back. Puck is dropped, one back. Elmira takes possession, trying to move it along. It's Coleman with it again. Throws it towards the net and an easy save there. As with 2.47 left to go, and I apologize again about the clock. Elmira not afraid to let it rip right now. You like to see that out of the power play. It has been something that has been sorely lacking for Elmira this season. PV set to take the draw. As puck is dropped, one back. Cody Rogers turns off, back to the point to Coleman. Coleman with it, down to Rogers. Rogers passes across. Dumas moves it down to Gaeta. Back to Dumas, back across to Coleman. Coleman back across to Dumas. Dumas back to Coleman, he fakes the shot now. Coleman towards the net, deflected towards the front, and it's taken away and sent 200 feet. A minute 23 left to go in the power play. The River Sharks keeping it as it is. Back to get it goes Coleman. A minute 15 in the man advantage. Again, a double minor to Kyle Gonzalez. Moved ahead, here comes Davide Gaeta. Gaeta into the zone, dumps that puck off, and now will chase it down as back behind Tetro with it. Tetro dumps that puck and will get it all the way down. Back to play, Lavecchi leaves there for Yarwood. Big change now for Almira. Last 56 of the power play. Drop to Gisseau. Gisseau looks up and takes it himself, cuts around a defender and it's taken away from him. Yarwood will go back to play. Yarwood has to turn this puck around quickly. Cameron Yarwood sends ahead. Gisseau moves it along. Back into the zone. Gisseau comes up with it. Gisseau back to Yarwood. Yarwood looking, has Newman wide open on the other side and goes to him. Newman gets around a defender, keeps the puck moving, sends it back down low. Gaeta turns off. Newman taken down there as that puck's worked along the boards. Newman gets in front of it. Big slapper but couldn't control. Newman right across. Big windup shot. Goes just wide. Again trying to knock that puck down. Newman Doing a great job of that, but Johnny Ruiz is going to break out. He's all alone, so he and Yarwood just look at each other. Lavecchi will get it back. 12 seconds to go in the man advantage. Four-minute power play, and nothing to show for it so far. Hustling it ahead. It's dumped back in. Elijah Wilson rolls it around the boards. Darius Davidson trying to get there and cannot. It'll be worked back out and go all the way back. 
Gonzalez gets out. Pozar comes up with it last minute in the first. Moved ahead, Jusso couldn't control. That puck sent down, they say no. I believe they had initially said no, so they're gonna bring that right back to center ice, I believe. They are gonna drop it at center ice. So, mistake by the officials. And I guess the clock must have ticked an extra second or two off there, my apologies. No, now they are taking it all the way back down. <laughs> One linesman was pointing at center ice emphatically. And now it is gonna come all the way back in the River Shark zone. So, the referee and the both linesmen discussing this. Now it's coming back to center ice, okay where it should have been from the beginning. So <laughs> here we go. 49.7 seconds remaining. Two nothing hat tricks right now. So Elmira with a lot of work to do. They're stopping the clock. Now they are gonna vis the, <laughs> adjust the clock. So now it's back to 54 seconds. So puck ready to be dropped. It's one back by Elmira. Playing it back is Pozar or my apologies, that was Coleman, moving that puck ahead. It's chipped up and dumped back deep into the zone. Dustin Gisseau keeps an eye on Pamelayan, chases him down, now Tetro moving it through his legs, and Ratcliffe will try to hustle it up. Harwell gets that puck back up and into the zone it comes. Through towards the front shot, save on Woolley. Right back towards the front shot, goes just wide. Harwell trying to move this puck around, gets it back down low. Woolley with it again, puck taken away. Stolen away by Elmira and trying to hustle this puck back out. Needs to get this to the offensive zone, Gisseau. Chasing after it as that one's gloved down by McCullum and he will just take the whistle with 18 seconds remaining. So another offensive zone draw for the River Sharks but have to find a way to execute down in the offensive zone. 18 seconds to go as Elmira with work to do. Have to find a way to put something behind McCullum, something they have not done yet here tonight. Two nothing lead for Danbury. PV trying to win a draw. He and Johnny Ruiz coming together. Ruiz will win that one back. Easy move up the wall. PV manages to cut it off, however. PV tries to turn and can't. Cunningham swatting at it. PV keeps the zone. Dump back down low into the zone. Dumas is there for it. Throws it towards the net. Some trouble for McCollum, but he jumps on top of it with 4.6 seconds to go. So pushing and shoving after the whistle. Maybe time for a quick faceoff win and a shot if Elmira can come up with it. Wilson Gisseau. Hopping over the boards. Elmira short a man. It looks like PV is going to be kept on the ice. So, just so. We'll try to get to the front of the net. PV to take the draw. Trying to get something back to Cameron Yarwood. PV waits. They're going to kick PV out of the faceoff circle. Just so was wide. As now Elijah Wilson to take the draw. Wilson gets set. The, ref, the linesman finally drops the puck. It's one back, but nobody can get there. He worked out by Danbury, sent all the way down, and the Vecchi kicks it aside. So, first period in the book, shots on goal, 11 to 10 in favor of the hat tricks. But you can't say that the River Sharks didn't have opportunities. Have to find a way to keep things going. The linesman and the official having some words in front of the benches. Not sure what that's all about, but. Well, the River Sharks still in a bit of a hole here, trailing right now 2-0 as Almira with some work to do. Sam Levecci wearing a brand new face mask. If you haven't gotten the chance to see it, I hope somebody's going to post that on social. But uh, beautiful, beautiful work done there and love to see that. But now a long time to talk with their head coach about what they need to do for the second period. Period to the long change coming up, 2-0 in favor of the hat tricks right now. And this is feeling a little bit like deja vu. Frisbee welding, LLC. Hopefully, this is, uh, <laughs> this is gonna be exactly like on Sunday, but we'll have to wait and see. When we come back, lots to talk about. You're listening to River Shark Hockey here on Mixler.com and live on YouTube. We'll be back after this. They sing, they 
string featuring the music of legends Queen, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Metallica, The Who, and more. And best of all, they're performing at your very own first arena. Don't miss these four female violinist vocalists known as the Femmes of Rock on Friday, April 26th. Tickets for the show presented by Guthrie and the Radisson Corning are available at firstarena.net. Top of the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Saturday, March 16th, the Elmira River Sharks return to the first arena to take on the defending Commissioner's Cup champion Danbury Hattricks at 6.07 p.m. Be down to the first arena for a chance to take home one of the inaugural season jerseys from your Elmira River Sharks. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster.com or by calling the box office 607-734-POP. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fin. For more than a century, You've counted on Arnett Health, and Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do, because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients, focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. Trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain-free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x-ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and sure smile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607-733-6825 today. Ready for a financial glow up? Look no further than Ingersoll Rand Federal Credit Union. We've got great rates for your life. Whether it's for your dream home or a new ride, we've got your back. Easily access your IRFCU accounts with our mobile app. View balances, deposit checks, and move money with just a tap. Your money, your way. Here at IRFCU, we are committed to our community through our financial education programs in schools and free financial counseling for members in need. We're building a stronger community together. At Callier's, we take pride in delivering great barbecue every day. Our slow-cooked, smoky-flavored home cooking is a favorite among young and old. From signature spare ribs and baby back ribs to brisket and chicken. But did you know that Callier's caters too? We offer a full range of catering options to suit any event. From wedding and corporate events to graduation parties, retirement and backyard barbecues, and pig roasts. If you have an event coming up, give us a call. We're now booking for the 2024 season. At Callier's, we do great barbecue. And that's just the beginning. Call today and book your next event with Raya at 570-888-2927 for Calliers. It's a place of extraordinary education. It's where heroes begin and potential is realized. A place of purpose and dedication. A devotion to learning, to pushing the boundaries of our understanding of medicine. It's our purpose, our mission, to prepare our students for the uncertain future, to keep asking new questions, to find new answers. This is LECOM. We make doctors. It's time to get to work. Frisbee Welding LLC in Spencer, New York is partnering with the River Sharks this season. They're a local family-owned company that manufactures hay feeding and handling equipment, as well as a dealer for over 40 equipment lines for everything from large farming operations to your hobbyists and homesteaders. They offer top-of-the-line equipment and more economical versions to fit your needs. Find them on Facebook or call or text Chris at 607-422-0820 for your landscaping, construction, agriculture, snow removal, forestry, and sportsman's attachments and equipment needs. For more than a century, you've counted on Arnett Health. Counted on us to heal you, support you, encourage you, get you back on your feet. And for more than a century, Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do. Because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Looking forward while embracing our legacy. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients. Focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. At Arnett, we're nurses, doctors, and teams of other caregivers inspired by healing. We know your physical, emotional, and spiritual health are each part of the whole of you. 
to continue a tradition of medicine driven by compassion, teaching, and healing. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. But obviously we've had a, uh, an interesting year so far with the River Sharks and your first season here in Elmira. Yeah. What's it been like for you getting uh, getting going here in Elmira and, and finding uh, finding things uh, the way they play out here? This is obviously the first opportunity you've had to play at First Arena as a hometown fan. How are you, or how are you finding it? Yeah, I mean, obviously you don't want to change a whole lot in your game. Um, I mean, for the most part, like, we've had... A lot of uh, guys from the you know, previous years I played with, uh, now G as a coach, um, so I kind of know the way that he wants things done and uh, all that, so like I said, don't really want to change up too much what you know I'm doing, um, just want to come in and do my job, um, but yeah, no, everything's been great so far here, uh, obviously we struggled a little bit in the beginning, but uh, I think we've turned it around, you know, for the whole second half of the season, obviously rolling in the playoffs now, I think we're, you know, in a good spot, and uh, I think all the guys are starting to click together now. Everyone's on the same page. So, yeah. You talked about getting into the playoffs, and obviously, and we're just going to pass this back and forth. Ben, sorry about that. But uh, you talked about getting in the playoffs. Obviously, a four-point lead over Watertown right now. Three big games this weekend against Danbury and, of course, against the Binghamton Black Bears uh, on Sunday. When you look at those matchups, knowing you have a chance still to catch a Danbury Hattricks team that you could easily take third place away from, uh, how big do these matchups loom in the locker room? Yeah, um, no. Going into this week, I think the biggest preparation is obviously for these Danbury games. The Binghamton one's obviously important, but like you said, Danbury, we're very close to in the standings, and obviously if we can take three points each game, I think that's going to put us in a whole better situation come, you know, uh, early April. For sure, and obviously, you know, third is better than fourth, obviously, but uh, also a little bit more travel in that third and fourth, so interesting interesting thought process going uh, between uh, Motor City and Binghamton, it, obviously a, a vast difference in the amount of time you'd spend on a bus, but um, when you guys look at this time of the year, and especially, I mean, right, you're in, you know, you're not a rookie anymore, you played a few games in the uh, in the pro seasons, uh, what's it like to play meaningful games this time of the year, obviously, how much different is it than, uh, than obviously a game in October? Yeah, no, uh, I think that's something that we always say is you know come springtime it's a whole different hockey game uh the competition's up everyone's you know obviously getting ready for playoffs trying to get their spots so everyone's crucial i mean you want to come in and do your job and obviously go steal the three points each night so uh, you know, spring hockey is the best and you know that's where we're at now speaking of which obviously again we're talking about watertown and of course the river sharks uh when you guys go in the room do the coaches uh let you guys look at the scoreboards or, or how do you guys uh are you more focused on your guys's game i know the coaches answer what he wants to hear is focused on young game but are you guys kind of watching scoreboards out of the corner of your eye um i mean for the most part i think during the games i'm trying to stay concentrated on just us but uh you know i think we'll we'll get notified you know every now and then of maybe you know what the scores might be but that's just kind of motivation for us throughout the game just to make sure that we can you know secure the deal but yeah Sure. Now, obviously, again, this is uh, springtime in Elmira, if you will, so we've got uh, got the golf weather going on, uh, got some opportunity for you guys to get out and be out in the out in the community a little bit more uh, than maybe over the winter when it was, well, it didn't really, I can't say it snowed, it didn't really snow this uh, winter, but, really, no. <laughs> but, but a little bit more chance for you guys to get out and about. Is there anything you've found that you like to do here in, the, in Elmira? Um... I mean, so far, I mean, I've, I've only gone golfing with guys once. I'm not a huge golfer, but uh, I don't know. I, uh, maybe go get an ice cream after this, something, enjoy the weather. But uh, no, um, I, know, I just obviously try to stay busy, do stuff with the guys, uh, whatever that is, after practice, grabbing lunch or whatnot. But no, just try to enjoy the weather and get out with the guys. Sure. And then Coach, obviously, uh, Brett was an early addition to the team here. Uh, what was it about him that you wanted to bring in and, and what was it that uh, that made him an attractive river shark for you? Yeah, I mean, we were we were teammates for two years, so that was always a thing. And when he became available, obviously, I was surprised. I jumped all over it, and he's been um, just fantastic, great leader. I'm um, obviously the probably the best penalty. Him and Peavy are the two best penalty killers in the league. It's um, it's great. Just he he plays his role and doesn't complain. It just does whatever whatever it takes to win. So it's it's great to to have him. But before I let you go, I'm going to ask you, you got a coach now who's been your teammate for two years, as he just said. Uh, how different is it to walk into the room and see him sitting behind the coach's desk and sitting behind the bench in the suit uh, versus what you saw of him as a player? Yeah, I know. I'd love 
love to say it, it feels really different, but I mean, honestly, no. Like when I was playing with G, he was the leader in the room, and obviously he was, you know, talking to us and all like that. So him as a coach, it doesn't really change that. You still look at him the same as he was as a player, and he's doing a really great job with it. So you know, I'm happy. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Brett Parker. Thank you for joining us here on the Coaching Show, and we'll let you get back to eating. Right, so, thank, thank you. Thanks, Tyler. Welcome to another edition of the Coaches Show live from Mooney Sports Bar and Grill here in Horseheads. Tyler Drich, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know it's a uh, big time of year for you guys as you guys get primed and ready for the postseason. Obviously, four points ahead of Watertown, not the way you wanted to end the weekend, but a huge victory in Danbury, a hard place to play. Uh, what do you attribute to the success of this weekend? Yeah, I think... Um you know, we had a good game Friday. Obviously, you know, Binghamton's a good team. We made some mistakes we don't want to make. Um, our inconsistency kind of still is there, but um, to win the game, being down 2 nothing Sunday, be able to fight back like that um, was a really good sign. So, uh, you know, four points up, we're still up. We control our own destiny, so it's good. Speaking of control your own destiny, obviously four well, excuse me, nine big points, three straight games here this weekend. You guys have a great big chance with Watertown only playing once to kind of put a big margin between you and the uh, the fifth place team. Yeah, no. Um, you know, when you get a chance to, to kind of pull away, I guess you could say, you got to take advantage of it. Obviously, Danbury, Danbury, Binghamton is tough, but this division is tough. It, it's a tough schedule for everybody, so, you know, we got to play the games that are on the schedule. Well, that being said, you guys have played Danbury, Danbury very well this season. Uh, and part of that has to be attributed, obviously, to the heroic efforts of uh, Sammy Bernard back in between the pipes. 60 huge stops the other night. Um, obviously, I'm sure you'd want the defense to tighten up a little bit more on that, but when you look at that type of uh, that type of save rate and save percentage, you have to be happy with the goaltending right now. Yeah, obviously, you can't say enough about Sammy. He's been nothing short of spectacular, so... Um, but the shots were 62-56, so if it was like 62-20, I'd be a little more upset. But it was just one of those Federal Hockey League games, so um, well goaltended. But, um, yeah, Sammy's been great. We uh, couldn't thank him enough for a lot of his performances. Well, speaking of which, obviously you talked about the schedule already. Danbury, Holm, Binghamton, all in a three-day span. Uh, plenty of time on the uh, on the big iron line, if you will. Uh, you guys have had a very home-heavy early schedule, and now that you're in the late part of the season and you're down to your final three home games, two after this weekend, uh, what are you kind of sitting to the guys about getting out on the road and, and kind of what's enjoyable about the road, especially considering most of these trips are just really kind of there and back trips? Yeah, I'm pretty sure a record might actually be better on the road, so I can't really complain <laughs> with it. And obviously, you know, the beginning of the year team with the brand new team, I, I think there's one guy remaining, so... Um, you know, that first half really, it is what it is. So since um, that Columbus trip we were talking, we're uh, game over 500. So in a tough division, which I think we're uh, we're happy in the direction we're going toward playoffs. And speaking of which, obviously, you know, you talk about the division. One non-divisional matchup left, and it's a week from today. We're going to head out to uh, Port Huron, Michigan for the final out-of-division trip of the season. How much more do these three games this weekend against not only divisional opponents, but one team that's directly in front of you in the standings. Right. How much more do they need? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we still could to finish in third place. Um, you know, we play Binghamton and Motor City in the playoffs. You know, they're, they're both good teams. So, obviously, the higher you get in the standings, the better. So, very important games for us. And, you know, we played well against them. They're a good team, though. So. For sure. Now, obviously, again, a big home game again this weekend as the uh, the fans in First Arena have been showing up, uh, getting things going here for the last couple of weeks. Uh, from a player's perspective, we talked about it earlier in the season, what a difference it makes to have that place bumping and, and the way that it reverberates and the way that you guys feel it. Uh, from the coaching aspect, though, now really getting to see it again, starting to remember uh, what it's like to see all that. What's it been like for you as a coach to hear the fans back behind you and doing the things they used to do? Yeah, like I said, um, last coach's show, the, the more packed it is, the more you know, energized our team is. I think that's kind of just a natural thing. So we like to see it packed every night. I don't, I don't know why it isn't. It should be. So, yeah, that's about all I have to say about that. I don't know, I don't know why it's not packed every night. <laughs> what, what is everybody doing? Please come out and support these guys. They work their butts off. Um, 
know, we went to Elmira College game. We saw a lot of posts on Facebook, go support them. We went and supported them as did the rest of Elmira, so uh, we would like to support back as well. Um, they work very hard every day, so um, they appreciate it. Speaking of which, the weather getting warmer, you don't need to bundle up to come to the arena, That's so, That's so nice jump. to come on down. and. and Actually, pretty often there. Yeah? yeah. Nice. Well, to hear that, but it's nice to get the air conditioning without paying for it. Yeah, amazing. You know the nice thing, bills are high. Crazy. So, we'd love to see that. And uh, obviously, you know, a great time to be had at the first arena. But now, again, as you focus on uh, on things, the trade deadline is passed. The major moves uh, that can be made have been made. You've acquired a roster that you're, ha you're presumably happy with right now. Uh, what is it that these fans need to keep a lookout for here as the uh, tail end of the season really approaches. We got five weeks left. Yeah, I mean, I kind of treated the since January 1st as a trade deadline, trying to put the pieces together. And, um, I, you know, obviously you always want to better your team, but the pieces are um, kind of what we wanted, and it's, it's nice to have. Um, everybody has a role, and they're flourishing in it. Um, and now getting Cameron full-time and Powell full-time and just so, um, it's even, even more veteran presence we have with our team that we didn't have, so it's great. Well, there you heard it. Obviously, the importance can't be understated of Cameron Yarwood, Kyle Powell, and my apologies about that. Cameron Yarwood, Kyle Powell, and Dustin Jusso. Jusso has been a little bit of a spark plug already here tonight. Uh, you've seen how he's responded to those two goals just after the quarter point of the period. Uh, and here comes the hat tricks out onto the ice now. You'll be seeing the River Sharks in just a moment again. Danbury wearing those green St. Patrick's Day jerseys. They will skate right to left across your YouTube screen here in the second period. The River Sharks in those visiting whites will skate left to right. And of course, again, Sam Levecci's first game as an Elmira River Shark. Two early goals and obviously not the way he wanted to start it, but still again, 12 shots on goal. He is 10 for 12 on the evening so far, getting his first start. And again, if you haven't had a chance to see his brand new helmet, that thing is a thing of beauty. So uh, make sure you get down to the first arena tomorrow night. Check it out live at the Shark Tank. And now a long look here as the River Sharks try to figure out what they can do to get this one going back in their favor. Again, felt a little bit of deja vu going down 2 nothing here in the first period. Got to find a way to keep pushing the pace of play and get everything back down the other end of the ice. It looks like Cody Rogers out here to start the period offensively, along with Blake Peavy and Brett Parker. So head coach Tyler Jurich never won too afraid to mess with the lineup and try to find a way to get yourself into a game. So we'll see what he can do here. As that puck is dropped, one back. Cody Rogers gets that puck back again. Back to Pozar up. Parker able to touch, and they say no icing. Back behind. Chasing after it. Abdella moves that puck along, and again, trying to move that puck up quickly. It's tipped back towards the front, but PB couldn't get there. That'll be turned out, and played, trying to play it from his backside was Rogers. It's picked off at center and turned around by PB and slapped through towards Parker. Parker is rubbed off, and now again, Danbury will just flip that puck down deep. 30 seconds into the second period, the period of the long change is Elmira trying to get this one set back up. It's banked to center ice. Cody Rogers comes up with it. He hustles it towards the offensive zone, drops for Brett Parker in offside. So with 19.24 to go, Elmira just outside their offensive zone. Long look here for the River Sharks as they try to find the offensive production. Just so Gaeta and Newman this is an interesting line, again, without Stephen Klink in the lineup, as Newman dumps that puck back in. Trevor Newman has been something to watch as he comes in here. Ratcliffe dumping that puck back out as that's dumped back, chasing after it. Quick move there as trying to play it along. Woolley will get it, send it back down low. Playing it there was Harwell. He's harassed quickly there by Coleman. Harwell has that puck swatted away, and now Coleman's lost his stick, trying to get that back. He does eventually, but again, that puck's still moving down low. Woolley with it. Woolley pinned to the boards. And again, comes out of the scrum with it. Moved towards the front by Ratcliffe. Lifted stick and hustling back out the other way. Jusso moving it along. Trying to get along around LaBelle, and he will. Jusso with it. Shot. Save. Turned again. Can't get it. Gaeta was there, but couldn't hammer home the rebound. Back behind. Bedard will move that puck along for Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe plays it out. Finds Woolley. Woolley and LaBelle into the zone. Shot. Kick. Save. Shot. Goal. LaBelle on the rebound. A 
perfect play by LaBelle. He went right to the net, and they took advantage of the odd man rush. So three nothing Danbury right now. As now the River Sharks with a huge hole. Watch it here, there's the odd man rush, thrown towards the net, bounces off the pad right to LaBelle. And it's three nothing as that puck is dropped and one back, chasing after it. Elmira not gonna come up with it, it's rolled along the boards. Di Nicola trying to move this puck up quickly as Danbury trying to push Elmira right back down. Pozar back for it, rolls it around the boards. Played off of Elijah Wilson, but kept in the zone, tipped there by Yarwood, sent into the corner as Elijah Wilson turns, trying to play that puck ahead. Wilson sends it wide, looking for Davidson, couldn't get it to him, Yarwood will turn it back. Cameron Yarwood passes across, Pozar moving it ahead. Elijah Wilson, they say he did not touch it, McCollum, I thought, left his crease, but apparently did not. As Wilson arguing, he touched it. Referee said he didn't see it. 17.59 to go here in period two. So faceoff comes all the way back to the left-hand side of Levecci. Three nothing in favor of the hat tricks. As again, puck drop here, Dominic Dumas. He's tied up on the draw, trying to kick it along. It's went towards the goaltender and covered right up. So about three seconds ticking away there as Elmira's got to find some giddy up to their game here. Cannot fall any further behind. As they wait, puck is dropped, trying to win it back. Played along, Pozar with it. Mark Pozar spinning it around, flips that puck out to center ice, takes a funny carom. Di Nicola couldn't knock it down. Back behind, Darius Davidson on the chase, can't get there. Elijah Wilson takes a look, tries to pin himself to the boards and cannot. Work back out by Falanga. Falanga into the zone, onside somehow, Di Nicola, as that puck's turned right back around and sent back towards the blue line. Elijah Wilson poking at it but can't control. Flip back deep into the zone where it's turned around. Wilson turns and finds the puck and gets it out to center ice but can't control again. Again dumped down deep. Excellent work by Dustin Henning. Again, he's a late season addition to this hat trick roster. Moving it out, Dominic Dumas racing for the offensive zone, has help with him, throws it through the middle as Davidson was taken down and into the net. That's gonna draw a penalty and Elmira's gonna get another chance here. 17-10 to go as Darius Davidson was taken down and appears a little bit hobbled. He will head for the bench as Elmira trying to find their way back on the power play. That double minor certainly did not help them out a little bit earlier, but now with two minute minor, we'll see what head coach Tyler Jurch has in mind here. Looks like Gaeta PV Rogers up front. On the backside, Dominic Dumas and looks like Tanner Coleman out here as they try to get the net back in place. And Elmira looking for something to spark some offense. PV sets. Loses that draw, works back behind as that'll be spun all the way around. Dump back to center ice as Coleman knocks it down but unable to play it off. Johnny Ruiz rushes in, throws it towards Levecchi. Levecchi covers it up and takes no chances. Johnny Ruiz, certainly not one to sit back on the PK. So a minute 48 to go in the power play for the River Sharks and the shots in favor of Danbury on the power play. So again, a chance here for Elmira to find a bit of a spark. As that puck is dropped, Peavy gets it to the boards. Coleman back for it. Coleman back behind. Slows things down and takes a long look. Coleman calling for help. As Coleman sends it ahead, here comes Davide Gaeta throwing it ahead, chips it off a leg. And now Dominic Dumas trying to get there. Xavier Abdella puts it off at Dumas. Dumas tries to move it back to a teammate and can't. Turn back towards the blue line and out as Dumas has to circle back. Back to play goes Coleman. Coleman dekes around center ice, gets over the red line and dumps it down deep. Now Dumas trying to chase it down. He and Abdella come together again. Trying to move it off, it's Gaeta back to the point for Coleman. Coleman waits, passes back over, it's Dumas. Dumas back down low, Gaeta. Gaeta back to the point to Coleman. Coleman passes across as he was looking for the one-timer, didn't get it, shot comes through, and that one bounces around and all the way back to center ice. Coleman will have to reset. Danbury gonna try to make a change as Coleman turns to look. Coleman held in his own zone here and bounces that to center ice, but Ratcliffe gets it back easily. Trying to move it back along is Abdella, passing it all the way across. 
McKittrick up near the opposing blue line. Has some help, too, as Coleman tries to swat it in. Johnny Ruiz and McKittrick into the zone. McKittrick with it. Fires off of the post as the River Sharks catch a break there. 34 seconds to go on the man advantage. Cody Rogers trying to hustle his way up back into the offensive zone. Gets past Jasso and still has some issues with control. Rogers still couldn't come up with it, and it's finally slapped back to center ice. 20 seconds remaining. Cameron Yarwood back to play. Levecchi leaves it there. 15 seconds remaining. Yarwood hustling it ahead. He gets in the offensive zone, turns and looks. Back behind the net now. Yarwood still with possession, looking towards the net, bouncing it back behind, back to Yarwood. Yarwood back below the goal line. Last second of the power play, it is over. And that bounces right back to center ice. A chance here for Cunningham, but no. Excellent work defensively here for the River Sharks by Elijah Wilson to get back. Worked along the side of the net. Still worked around towards the front. And they're gonna call it a goal. The shot went right through the net that was falling on top of the goaltender. And they are arguing it immediately. We'll watch it again. They have to wave this one off. There's no way they can count that goal. We'll wait to see it, but there's no way they can count that as a goal. They're gonna go upstairs and check the review on this. I would like to do the same. We'll see if they'll give us a look here, as there it is. Everything is on top of the goaltender. There's no way he can make that save. The, the net is on top of him. So the referees are looking. We'll see if we get another angle. I don't know. I, I would think you would have to call this a dead play. The net came all the way over Sam Levecchi. So we'll wait to see exactly what the officials signal when they come out. They're taking a long look at this. But it's either 4 nothing or it remains 3 nothing and a defensive zone draw for the River Sharks. We'll wait to see. I wouldn't think there's too much of a debate here. Yes, it crosses the line, but can the goaltender make the save? Levecchi had no chance to make that save. There's zero chance he can make that save. I imagine the only real question is, how did the net get dislodged? Which has to be what they're looking at. We'll wait to see. I figured that, as we'll see the replay again right here. So some contact back behind as the goaltender is now covered by the net. So yes, the puck does cross the line. There's no doubt about that. There was contact there. I, I still firmly believe that this one has to get waved off. Levecchi has no chance to make the save. So we'll wait to see here as the official's still under the hood, you, to use an old football term, but 14.58 to go. It's a 3-0 Danbury lead right now, and if they call this a goal, that'll make it 4-0, and you wonder what head coach Tyler Jurich will do there. So still communication as we wait to see. The officials are still looking at this. There's no doubt the puck crossed the line. 100% the puck crossed the line. That is not the argument. The argument here is Lavecchi had no chance to make the save. Now the only thing again I could think that they're possibly looking at is that there was contact that initiated the net coming off its moorings. I do not believe they'll say Yarwood pushed him into the net, but I have to assume that is what is being looked at. Obviously we have no idea. A long look here as Elmira holding their breath to say the least, waiting for this one to be decided. As again, the River Sharks trailing three nothing right now. The River Sharks already with a short bench. Oh, here come the officials, so we'll see. As I'm hoping the long 
discussion here is about getting the time right now. So we'll see. Good goal. The River Sharks are not going to be happy about that. So that makes it 4 nothing for Danbury. And Cody Rogers has to be losing his mind over there. How? I, I mean, Lavecchi had no chance to make that save. The net was over the top of him. Rogers having the discussion, and I just, I do not know what the justification is. And I'm sorry to say we will not get one. Unfortunately, just not something that's ever explained uh, is the decision making from the official, official review. And I do believe that is something that should come and be addressed. Hopefully they'll be discussing that over the league meetings. But 14.58 to go here in the second period. It is technically supposed to be the media timeout. I think that's what they're buzzing for, but we're, I think we're going to continue on. Puck is dropped, and here we go. 4 nothing in favor of Danbury, and they're chanting Siv at Sam Levecci. Puck rolled back around as chasing it down. Rogers comes away with it and sends that puck ahead. Brett Parker will turn it around. Parker with it. Dumps it off there for Cody Rogers. Rogers with possession, moving it ahead into the offensive zone. Rogers sidesteps the check, throws it towards the front. Parker comes up with it and sends it back towards Cody Rogers. Back behind to Parker. Parker looking for a wraparound attempt. He swaps places with Yarwood, who pinches down. Yarwood below the goal line now. Turning around, still keeps possession on the puck. Takes it to the far side. Dumps that one off. Looking back towards the point now. Back across for Yarwood. Yarwood dumps it back down deeper as everybody racing for the puck. Parker could not come up with it. It'll go back, and William Berry moves that puck around. Danbury hustling out the other way. Stretch pass attempted, and we've seen that a time or two. Back behind goes Pozar. Elmira has to get something going offensively. Dumps that puck up. Parker able to touch it but can't control it, and it'll be turned back around once again by McKittrick. Dump back in. Pozar turning. Pozar sending that puck along the boards. It's picked off right towards the front of shot. Lavecchi makes a save, and no, it goes into the net. And it's 5-0. And that'll do it on the night for Sam Lavecchi. McKittrick with a ripper. Lavecchi makes the initial save. And then it squirts through him and drops right below the goal line. So, the netminder heads down the tunnel and Frankie McClendon comes in. It is 5-0 Danbury. Puck is dropped and one back. Danbury flips that puck ahead and now LaBelle trying to get there. It's knocked back down by Trevor Newman. Newman turns it around, tries to throw it to Jusso, but it's turned around again by Harwell. Dump back off for LaBelle. LaBelle moving it back ahead. As again, trying to move that puck through center ice. It's dumped in by Woolley, but picked off there by Jusso. Picked up by Gaeta. Trying to move it along, it's de Blasio. De Blasio back into his own zone. Plays it out for Coleman. Coleman moving it ahead, right back out. Off of the skate of Gaeta. Davide Gaeta dumps it back off there for Jusso. Jusso shot, and it's kicked aside. Back again, dumping that puck deep was Coleman. Gaeta trying to get there and cannot as Danbury hustles that puck back ahead. Back out to center ice. Dustin Jusso moving it back for de Blasio. Back behind. Swatted along there by Newman, who takes a hard hit there. And he gets it from Harwell. And now Newman chasing after that puck as Woolley turns it around. Sends it for LaBelle. LaBelle, who has the rebound goal here in this period, looking. Dumps it back off towards a front shot. Saved by McClendon. Move to the sideboards. Jusso will hustle out. Jusso and Newman towards the offensive zone. Breaks in. Elijah Wilson fresh off the bench. Dumped off for him. Wilson towards the front, banked off, loose in front, trying to shove it. That puck is still loose, and hold on. The referee's got his hand up. I don't know. I think that puck might have crossed the line. That puck is definitely in the back of the net. So with 12.35 to go, Jusso now being tugged at here. Jusso still being tugged at. We're not going to go to the break here quite yet. As Jusso having some words, that puck finally dropped over back near the faceoff circle. Yarwood out to talk with the official. Dustin Jusso 
He's being poked and prodded at, and that's nothing new here in Danbury. Certainly no affinity for their former teammate. And now again, I guess we're not going to get a look at this one, but we will go to the media timeout. We'll be back after this. 5 nothing in favor of the Danbury Hattricks. We'll be back after this. They sing, they string, featuring the music of Legends Queen, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Metallica, The Who, and more. And best of all, they're performing at your very own first arena. Don't miss these four female violinist vocalists known as the Femmes of Rock on Friday, April 26th. Tickets for the show presented by Guthrie and the Radisson Corning are available at firstarena.net. All right, we're going to come back a little early from this just due to the odd nature of how that all rolled out. They did not check that. Cameron Yarwood was screaming at the bench during that media timeout. And with 12.35 to go, a 5-0 Danbury Hattrick lead right now. We'll get that clock adjusted for you folks back at home. And again, I want to thank you all for joining us here tonight as obviously the River Sharks in desperate need of points as the faceoff will come right to the left-hand side of the netminder. So, 5 nothing lead, and again, not sure how that puck didn't end up in the back of the net, but according to the officials, it did not. So, we wait, puck is dropped, one back by Danbury that time as Elijah Wilson swats it along, trying to move it up back behind the net, does get it there, moves it back to the point for Pozar. Pozar looking. Fires it along, and it goes just wide of the net. Back chasing it is Dumas. He gets tied up, and again, can't come up with it. Yarwood trying to pinch, but can't. Pozar will get it back now as Pozar plays that puck off the boards. Looking for Darius Davidson. It's into the zone. Elijah Wilson comes up with it. Back down low. It's Dumas. Backhander shot, and off the post. Referee immediately waving that one off. Back the other way it comes. Danbury passed across. Looking, shooting save. Frankie McClendon again. Wrap back up the boards. Abdella unable to control it at the blue line. Passes across. Dump back in. Lavecchi, who started this game, pulled after the fifth goal. Move back to center ice. Trying to play it along, but Johnny Ruiz able to cut it off. Brett Parker pinching, but can't control. Back behind and off sides as that puck will be blown dead. 11.42 to go here in period two. It's 5-0 Danbury as the River Sharks... Still sit just four points ahead of Watertown right now. Lovecci back on the bench now. I can see him just down below me. Certainly has to be frustrated as his debut, not the way you wanted it to start off his time here in Elmira. PV set to take the draw. Puck is dropped, one back by Danbury wearing those St. Patrick's Day green jerseys. 11.37 to go here in the second period as Cunningham trying to move it along. Has a couple here tonight already, including that controversial one with the net over the top of Levecci. Puck moved along again. PV trying to tie up his man as that's dumped in off a skate, so no icing. Back to get it again. Played around by de Blasio. Right up to the point. Pamela Ann fires it through. It's deflected as, again, trying to get back down deep in the zone. Danbury continues to work that puck. Back to the point to Ruiz. Ruiz fires it towards the net and a save, Frankie McClendon. So again, see Curtis Hedgey out here as well. Haven't said his name a lot here tonight as of yet. So, Almira seems content with the players they have out there. Danbury makes a full line change. Five nothing in favor of the hat tricks as the Almira River Sharks comeback needs to start now. Puck is dropped, tied up. Danbury gets that puck back. It's Abdella moving it along. Ratcliffe with it. Tries to dump it, sends it deep into the corner, and that will be taken back again. Back to the point. Shot, save Abdella. As moved along quickly by Cody Rogers, he gets it. Backhands it out of the zone. Swatting at it was Brett Parker. He falls down, but Abdella gets right in there. Cody Rogers picks it off and breaks in the zone. Rogers, top of the slot, kick save there. 
again by McCollum. Right back down low, Danbury able to take possession as Abdella looks up the ice, dumps it off to his defensive partner as Gonzalez gets it back to center. Picking it up now, Danbury. Spread three wide, back against three River Shark defense. Back the other way, Elmira with a quick flip. That was Newman. He and Rogers entered the zone. Rogers looking towards the net, deflected just wide as that one rides the boards up on the near side, trying to get that puck out. It's flipped back towards center ice. Some trouble controlling again for Bedard. He does get it off of Yarwood now, and that puck's down deep as Danbury looks to make a change. Almost halfway through the game as... Cameron Yarwood flips that puck back to center ice, looking for Davide Gaeta. Couldn't get it to him as the bell takes it back in his own zone. Dumped right back, all the way down as Pozar will muscle his way to it. And that will put a stoppage on the clock and an offensive zone draw. With 9.56 left to go, it should take us to the second media timeout. When we come back, we'll have the second half of this game. You're listening to River Shark Hockey here on Mixler.com and live on YouTube. Top of the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Saturday, March 16th, the Elmira River Sharks return to the first three to take on the defending Commissioner's Cup champion Danbury Hattricks at 6.07 p.m. Be down to the first three for a chance to take home one of the inaugural season jerseys from your Elmira River Sharks. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster.com or by calling the box office 607-734-POP. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fin. For more than a century, you've counted on Arnett Health, and Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do, because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients, focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. Trust you. All right, with that, we are back. 5 nothing, Danbury. If there's a comeback in the River Sharks, they've got to find it now. Gisseau out here to take the draw. Puck is one back. Pozar across to Yarwood. Big windup sends it right into the corner. And then Danbury breaks it quickly back out the other way. Hustling out as that one's dumped into the corner. William Berry there for it, dumps it deep. Yarwood trying to chase it down. Falanga is there. And it's picked up by Dustin Jusso. Jusso has it swatted away from him by Barry. Poke checked ahead. And now Pozar moves it out three on two. Pozar with Gaeta and Newman dumping that in. Davide Gaeta chasing it into the corner. He turns off, dumps that puck around, but nobody there for it except for green jerseys. LaBelle back behind the net. Wraps it up for Barry. Barry lets it go. Gets to the blue line, but not out. Jusso able to keep it. Kept there. Looking back towards the point. It's Newman. Sends it back down low instead. Back towards the point again. Gaeta passes across. Kept deep in the zone. Nobody there for it. LaBelle will get it again. LaBelle right back up the sideboards on the near side. Hustling it back out. Di Nicola into the offensive zone. Drops a pass. Pass across. Ruiz with a shot and a huge stop by Frankie McClendon. McClendon grabbed that one. And I don't know where it hit him, but he was uh, quick to react. They're checking on Frankie McClendon right now. So with 8.58 to go, Johnny Ruiz with a ripper, and McClendon appears to be okay. Very glad to see that. So face off. We'll come to the right-hand side of McClendon. Five-nothing Danbury as the River Sharks go back to work here. Dumas lines it up with Johnny Ruiz. Puck one back. It's Coleman who comes away with it. Dumps that off. It's knocked out of midair by Ruiz, who played it with a high stick. As now that's touched, so that will be brought back outside the zone now. As 8.51 remains here in the second period, and Johnny Ruiz having a casual argument with the official. So, face off back at center ice. Dropped, and one back by Elmira. Coleman moves it along. Trying to get it out quickly was Hedgie. Hedgie dumps it back off for Coleman. Coleman back to play. Gets it out to center to Davidson. Can't control, penalty upcoming, and this is gonna go against Elmira. So, little pushing and shoving here. I did not see the initial call. Boarding is gonna be the call. Hold on. 
Danbury's going to the box. It wasn't blown until Almira touched. Okay, well, Danbury goes to the box for the boarding call. It's a two minute call. And it looks like it's gonna go against Cunningham. So the official comes over to explain it to Billy McCreary. Five nothing in Elmira, whose power play is 0 for three on the night. Gets another chance here. As a face off to the right hand side of the netminder. 8.37 to go here in period number two. Elmira has to find a way to execute. Jusso to take the draw, he wins it back. It's Wilson. Back across to Yarwood, trying to move it along. It's picked off and two on one. Here comes the hat tricks. Looking for a lane, it's Ruiz. Shooting, saved by Frankie McClendon. So face off will stay in the defensive zone. Ruiz and McKittrick again had a chance. I've said it time and time again. You can't sit back on the hat tricks. You have to constantly attack because they are going to. 8.26 remaining, puck is one back. Yarwood chasing as he puts Ruiz, a one-time teammate, into the boards. Jusso as well in there digging. And finally, Elmira comes out with it. Ruiz will go to the bench and he is all smiles. Dumped out, Newman chasing after it. He is gonna negate the icing, wrapped around the boards. Unable to keep the zone, it comes back out to Elijah Wilson, passed all the way across. Newman gets onside. Yarwood quickly back ahead. Elijah Wilson into the zone with Darius Davidson. Davidson tries to put it through and can't come up with it. Now it's knocked down, kept there by the River Sharks. Wilson dumps it off. Back behind, Newman sends it to the front and it's covered up by McCullum. As if once again, they're unable to get an actual opportunity. A minute 14 to go here in the man advantage. So face off off to the left-hand side of McCullum again. As a look, Wilson set to take the draw. Jusso and Yarwood on the backside. Puck is dropped, one back. Jusso hustles for it and gets there, keeps the zone. Jusso, big windup shot, save, towards the front shot and can't get it to go. Darius Davidson was looking for the backhand as Newman put into the boards hard. Newman trying to move that puck. Pinned to the boards, two Danbury Hattricks in there, two River Sharks in there, now a third and it finally comes out right into the slot and nobody there for it. Swatting at it was Jusso, but it's moved out to center ice. Played here by Yarwood, moving it ahead for Jusso. Jusso trying to cut off and can't, back behind. Trying to play it back, it goes all the way back to the defensive zone. Frankie McClendon out to play, moves it along for Yarwood. Banked back behind for Wilson. Wilson looks up ice, trying to find a target and can't. Sends it wide for Dumas. Dumas dumps that puck deep and now Peavy trying to chase after it. Back to get it goes Charlie Bedard. Rolls it around to the near side. Could not knock it down as again, Cody Rogers unsuccessful at the jumping attempt. Back behind goes Yarwood. Under seven minutes to go in the period, under 20 seconds to go in the power play. Hustling it ahead, it's Gaeta. Davide Gaeta sends it up to Dumas. Dumas looking through, passes across and couldn't hit with Gaeta. Back behind to the point, it's Yarwood again. Last seven, shot comes and goes just wide. Back to the sideboards, looking back to the point again. Rogers with a shot deflected, backhander and can't get it to go. Dumas back towards the front and that's turned out and right onto the stick of Cunningham, hustling back the other way. Cunningham in, shot save, Frankie McClendon. So with 6.28 left to go, Again, the power play goes for naught. That is where you miss a guy like Steven Klink, obviously. So hopefully he'll be back and ready to go in the lineup tomorrow. Face off gonna come to the right hand side of Frankie McClendon. Referee over there to talk with Billy McCreary. As the puck drop coming here. Ruiz and Jusso coming together again. One back by Jusso, Coleman comes away with it. Coleman looking up ice. Has Newman racing for the offensive zone, but takes it himself. Coleman into the offensive zone, right into the slot. He's knocked off the puck, moved into the corner for Jusso. Jusso dumping that puck off, it's back to Newman now. Newman back towards the point. Coleman can't settle it down and it'll work its way back to center. Pozar back in his own zone now, turning that puck around. Pozar dumping it off, bounces off and Ruiz takes possession. Johnny Ruiz dumping that puck in the corner and now Coleman chasing. Coleman therefore it wraps it around the boards, gets it up to Jusso. Jusso. Throws that puck ahead, trying to reach his man as stretching out, he will get there. Excellent work by Brett Parker. Back to the front, trying to move that puck. It's moved towards the front, just so swats at it, but can't control. Back again, hustling for it. Sent back towards the point and out. De Blasio will dump. 
as the River Sharks make changes. Back below the goal line. LaBelle harassed now by Darius Davidson. He breaks out from behind the net. LaBelle looks up ice, swats it ahead to Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe into the zone. 5.20 left to go in the second period. Passed across, looking, shooting. Saved by McClendon. Shot towards him again is covered. And again back behind the net. Another chance here. Harwell back to the point. Finds Gonzalez and it ekes its way back to center ice. Gonzalez, a little backhander. As that's picked off, Ratcliffe dumps it back to his defense again. Danbury again possessing the well, time of possession and the puck far too much. As Davidson pitchforks that back to center ice. Knocked back down. Gaeta moves it ahead. Gaeta and Wilson into the zone. Davide Gaeta with a shot. Rides the rails of the boards. And now Davidson will dump it again. Davidson tied up. And now Danbury out four on two. Back the other way. Harwell with it. Passed across with a lane shot. And goes just wide. Hedgie back to play. Flips it back to center ice. But nobody there for it. As that will get back into the defensive zone. Elmira trying to make a change here. Back all the way down. Hedgie, he's cut off as that puck's moved back along. Back behind, Hedgie with a diving attempt as Danbury wants something on that as Hedgie went sliding to try to take out the play. But with 4.27 to go, we'll get the final media timeout and we'll step aside after this 5 nothing in favor of the Danbury Hattricks. Trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain-free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x-ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and sure smile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607-733. 6825 today. Ready for a financial blow up? Look no further than Ingersoll Rand Federal Credit Union. We've got great rates for your life. Whether it's for your dream home or a new ride, we've got your back. Easily access your IRFCU accounts with our mobile app. View balances, deposit checks, and move money with just a tap. Your money, your way. Here at IRFCU, we are committed to our community through our financial education programs in schools and free financial counseling for members in need. We're building a stronger community together. All right, with that, we are back. Face off, off to the left-hand side of Frankie McClendon. 5 nothing Danbury. As the puck is dropped, the Hattricks win the draw. LaBelle moves it back down again. Big wind-up, back to LaBelle now. Winds up, shoots. McClendon with a save. And a bunch of guys fall on top of him. 4.18 left to go here in the period. Frankie McClendon appears to be okay. This Danbury bench certainly energized. And don't forget, these two squads meet again tomorrow night at the first arena. So a big rematch here tomorrow night, but a lot of time left in this one. Elmira scored four unanswered goals starting at the tail end of the second period back on Sunday. See if they can do it again here tonight. Puck moved out, Danbury still keeps possession. Passed along, it's Bedard. Throws it towards the net, kick save. Frankie McClendon fired off the boards and out. That one's not gonna have the distance, but Dominic Dumas trying to chase it back down anyway. Deflects that attempted pass from LaBelle. Now it gets back to him. LaBelle. Back up the near side boards and sends that all the way down. Pozar back to play. 3.53 left to go in the second period. Amira just trying to find the back of the net. Gets it back to center ice. Hustling that puck out. Dumas couldn't handle the pass. And that'll be taken around again. Tetro trying to move it. It's played ahead. Chopped away by Gesso. Moved forward and dumped back deep in the offensive zone. Gesso trying to chase it down. He and Tetro come together. Dumas back for it. Dumas is taken down, loses it, and that puck's sent all the way around. Yarwood turns, fires, as that's bounced ahead, but again, no one able to control it. Stick comes away from the defender. Dumped back down into the zone. Back to get it. Flipped ahead by Danbury, and the Hattricks will look to make changes. Yarwood with it, fires it along. Into the offensive zone, Trevor Newman. Newman. Circles towards the net, trying to get a shot off and can. Puck slides away from him. Peavy trying to move it. Gets it back down low. Turned off. Trying to play it off, but it's taken away by Gesso. He's going to earn himself a penalty here. As that one. And now some extra pushing. We'll see what that's about. As somebody else coming with him, I believe now. Gesso is going to the penalty box. And I don't believe he's going alone. So Dustin Gesso heads towards the sin bin. 
And again, it does look as though he'll be joined. Couple extra pokes for him from Bedard. Bedard is being sent to the box as well, it looks like. Just so not happy as Billy McCreary up on the bench clapping. Nice to see some class, for sure. This is a well-pedigreed head coach as we'll see what the official calls are here. Cody Rogers being dismissed, as is Johnny Ruiz. So referee pointing up to the ceiling. I'm not sure what that meant. So we'll wait for the penalties to show up on the board. Because I'm not 100% sure what the situation is. Right now it's 5-0 Danbury. So the officials still nothing on the board. Now Gaeta heading over towards the penalty box. So Jasso might have gotten an extra minor. And that's what it looks like. So a penalty kill for the River Sharks. As again, we wait for the official announcement, but my apologies, that clock ticked down on me there a little bit, but 2.59 to go. And it is now a penalty kill for Almira, who on the season, 76.1%. Well, the Danbury Hattricks had a perfectly respectable 18.1%, a little bit below the River Sharks on what they've had before this game, however. As now Almira is going to get kicked out of the faceoff circle. Peavy gets set. He loses that draw, and it's one back now. Danbury looking to set it up. Back to LaBelle. Poke checked away, and Peavy comes out with it. Blake Peavy hustling ahead. Peavy into the offensive zone. He's tied up by LaBelle, and it's taken away from him. As back the other way comes the hat tricks. LaBelle quickly moving it up to Harwell. Harwell into the zone, turning it around, looking again, dumping that puck all the way around. Cunningham chasing after it. Poke checked away from him. Back down for Ruiz. Ruiz back below the goal line to Harwell. Harwell back over to Ruiz along the hash marks. Back to the point, it's LaBelle. LaBelle passed across. Trying to set this up. Two minutes for unsportsmanlike to Berdard. As back behind, it's Harwell. Passed back behind, LaBelle. Waiting, passing across again. Shot again. Not, does not come as Ruiz is pushed to the boards. So two minors for Gisseau, that was the penalty. Back behind, Ruiz winds, fires, turned aside by, by Frankie. As again, that puck is loose and again, comes over the top of the net. Excellent work there by the River Sharks backup netminder. Frankie McClendon doing a heck of a job here. 158 to go in the period, 55 to go in the power play. LaBelle, wind, sends it down low again, towards the middle shot and goes just wide as that'll be blown dead as the net comes off its moorings. Minute 49 to go. And I gotta tell you, if that's enough to blow the whistle, I am not sure how the fourth goal ever counted. But again, a minute 49 to go. Jusso calling for the official. As I'm not sure what's happening. Something going on in the penalty box area. Jusso was not happy about it. So, face off coming back here to the left hand side of Frankie McClendon. Long look as the linesman looks ready. So some conversation continues as Peavy comes in to take the draw against William Barry. Puck is dropped. Barry ties it up. Puck goes along the boards and Pamela Ann able to keep the zone. Back down low. Pamela Ann moves that puck along the sideboards. Trying to set it back up. A minute 40 remaining. Back to Woolley. Passed across. A minute 35 to go in the period. Long look. 35 seconds to go in the man advantage. As it's cut. Back to the point. Ratcliffe. Looking back across again to Pamela Ann. Passed across for Woolley. Woolley back again as Ratcliffe passes along again to Pamela Ann. Pamela Ann, he's tied up. Brett Parker doing a job down there. Played off as Barry comes up with it. Passes across to Woolley. Last 15 of the power play. Back. Ratcliffe dumping that off. Dina Cola back to Ratcliffe. Trying to poke check it away. Back to the point. A shot deflected. And that puck continues to sit there. Ratcliffe comes up with a shot saved by McClendon. Sent wide. Last two seconds of the power play. Ratcliffe has it. Towards the front, broken up. And again, Danbury keeps the puck. Deflected around. Let go. Five on five hockey for the next 50 seconds. Broken up, saved by Frankie McClendon. 
as with 46.5 to go, the River Sharks gonna get a line change. So, Jusso still with time to serve. As now, another offensive zone draw, this time for Danbury, as the River Sharks need to get down to the other end of the ice. Puck is dropped, and Danbury comes away with it again. It's Cunningham. Pushed towards the boards, keeps the puck moving, however, as the Hattricks continue to dominate offensive zone. McKittrick with it, passed across, broken up by Gaeta. Gaeta comes away with it, passing across to Wilson. Wilson gets around. Wilson towards the offensive zone, he gets in. Looking for a lane, he'll dump that puck down deep. Nobody there for it, as now it comes around. Looking for a lane, it's Davide Gaeta. Gaeta back behind the net, looking for a wraparound attempt, couldn't find it, still keeps the puck, sends it down low for Wilson. Wilson trying to get free, he's pulled down and taken off the puck, no call coming on that. Puck flipped towards the blue line, knocked down by Davidson, Darius Davidson has it, shot goes just wide. Chasing it back in is Dumas, throws it towards the net, bounces loose towards the front and again can't get the shot to go. As the referee falls at center ice and the crowd applauds that. So, after two periods of play, it is five to nothing in favor of Danbury. And I don't know what head coach Tyler Jurich can say to his squad, but Jusso heading for the locker room right now. And he is getting a, uh, a bit of a beating from this Danbury crowd. So again, still 20 minutes to go as the River Sharks have yet to find the back of the net. You know they are itching and hungry to do so, but Danbury has been able to really put a hurting on the River Sharks as of right now. Five nothing, including that one goal that certainly was a little suspect to say the least, that went flying into the cage that was lifted over the goaltender's head. So, we will go to the intermission right now. The Elmira River Sharks trailing 5 nothing, A big 20 minutes ahead. We'll see if they can do something with it. We'll be back after this. You're listening to River Shark Hockey here on Mixler.com. Your home for River Sharks Hockey all season long. They sing. They string. Featuring the music of Legends Queen, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Metallica, The Who, and more. And best of all, they're performing at your very own first arena. Don't miss these four female violinist vocalists known as the Femmes of Rock on Friday, April 26th. Tickets for the show presented by Guthrie and the Radisson Corning are available at firstarena.net. Off the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Saturday, March 16th, the Elmira River Sharks return to the first arena to take on the defending Commissioner's Cup champion Danbury Hattricks at 6.07 p.m. Be down to the first arena for a chance to take home one of the inaugural season jerseys from your Elmira River Sharks. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster.com or by calling the box office 607-734-POP. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fin. For more than a century, you've counted on Arnett Health, and Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do, because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients, focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. Trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain-free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x-ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and sure smile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607-733-6825 today. 
Ready for a financial glow up? Look no further than Ingersoll Rand Federal Credit Union. We've got great rates for your life. Whether it's for your dream home or a new ride, we've got your back. Easily access your IRFCU accounts with our mobile app. View balances, deposit checks, and move money with just a tap. Your money, your way. Here at IRFCU, we are committed to our community through our financial education programs in schools and free financial counseling for members in need. We're building a stronger community together. At Callier's, we take pride in delivering great barbecue every day. Our slow-cooked, smoky-flavored home cooking is a favorite among young and old. From signature spare ribs and baby back ribs to brisket and chicken. But did you know that Callier's caters too? We offer a full range of catering options to suit any event. From wedding and corporate events to graduation parties, retirement and backyard barbecues, and pig roasts. If you have an event coming up, give us a call. We're now booking for the 2024 season. At Callier's, we do great barbecue. And that's just the beginning. Call today and book your next event with Raya at 570-888-2927 for Callier's. It's a place of extraordinary education. It's where heroes begin and potential is realized. A place of purpose and dedication. A devotion to learning, to pushing the boundaries of our understanding of medicine. It's our purpose, our mission, to prepare our students for the uncertain future, to keep asking new questions, to find new answers. This is LECOM. We make doctors. It's time to get to work. Frisbee Welding LLC in Spencer, New York is partnering with the River Sharks this season. They're a local family-owned company that manufactures aid feeding and handling equipment, as well as a dealer for over 40 equipment lines for everything from large farming operations to your hobbyists and homesteaders. They offer top-of-the-line equipment and more economical versions to fit your needs. Find them on Facebook or call or text Chris at 607-422-0820 for your landscaping, construction, agriculture, snow removal, forestry, and sportsman's attachments and equipment needs. For more than a century, you've counted on Arnett Health. Counted on us to heal you, support you, encourage you, get you back on your feet. And for more than a century, Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do. Because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Looking forward while embracing our legacy. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients. Focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. At Arnett, we're nurses, doctors, and teams of other caregivers inspired by healing. We know your physical, emotional, and spiritual health are each part of the whole of you. To continue a tradition of medicine driven by compassion, teaching, and healing. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. All right, well, there we go. It's working. <laughs> it's working now. Right. Awesome. All right. Well, Trevor, first off, welcome on into the Coaches Show. How are you? Good. Yeah, thank you. Good. Well, welcome to Elmira also. Obviously, a couple of uh, games here for you under your belt now. And, and actually, I was uh, doing some stat checking. You were almost at your collegiate point total in your pro career here in about a third of the game. So, yeah. so how does that feel, getting uh, getting your feet wet and yeah. getting going? Yeah, I mean, it feels cool. It's really good. I mean, it's a whole different game. So the first uh, weekend was really getting used to it. Um, and then done with the, all the guys here, and uh, no, I, I enjoyed it a lot. It's a lot of fun. You talk about gelling, and obviously this late in the season, it's starting to be the playoff push, playing different uh, meaningful games. Obviously coming out of college, how's the transition been for you to kind of adapt and, and get going? Mm-hmm, yeah, um, it's really, I want to say it's kind of been a tough one, but it's uh, I've learned quickly. Um, you know, it's good to uh, uh, do rehab during the week, and um, get ready for weekends ahead and make that playoff work. Well, the good news for you, in a couple of weeks we're going to play a Wednesday game, so you'll be right back to normal. Yeah, it'll, be, it'll be all good. Um, now, obviously, again, this is a huge weekend for the boys, and, and you coming in, at obviously, your rookie season here, getting a chance to, to get some games under your belt. Uh, who's kind of been the leader in the room bringing you guys along and trying to help you out getting accustomed? Yeah, so far, uh, I've been taking everything from everyone. Um, everyone's been around the league for uh, this season, even past season. Uh, before, um, I mean, all the uh, all the guys have been like uh, Yarzi, Powell, um, so it's been hitting it here and it. So um, yeah, I'm just taking everything in from them, uh, especially guys who have won uh, championships in the past. Um, so yeah, mainly the only guys, uh, Salvi, Captain, and uh, yeah, like Brad as well, and Cody, the guys with the letters. So yeah, pretty much taking everything in and enjoying the moment. 
I'm playing with for a coach now who's obviously a big name in this league. He's won championships. He's got scoring titles. He's, he's done pretty much everything you can do in this league. How much is that ease the transition for you when you can go to a coach like that and talk to him? No, it's really good. I mean, obviously, he's been, been in the league a while, been uh, doing his thing here, so... Uh, uh, you know, do my thing, maybe try to catch them in uh, points and all that, maybe goals, but uh, hey. we'll see how that happens. But uh, <laughs> no, no, uh, so I think that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> No, but uh, no, Tyler's been, uh, he's been uh, a lot of help here. He's been very accommodating and um, making me feel really well. That's awesome. And then Elmira, obviously, uh, kind of a different area um, from where a lot of guys come from. What's it, your, been your experience here uh, getting to know the fan base and getting to know, obviously, the town itself? Yeah, so far, yeah. So uh, playing back my junior days in Thorold is kind of a small town. Uh, fans would come out and watch. And then uh, more still, there wasn't, uh, it was mainly parents, uh, other student athletes watching. So first game it was really neat. I uh, had a smile on my face and all the fans out there come to watch and it's uh, really cool to experience that and everyone uh, wanted to be at the game and watch it. So it's something different I haven't experienced before. Well, speaking of which, obviously, uh, one of the biggest things in the transition, and this is going to sound funny, Tyler, I'm sure, but uh, the goal horn, the first time it went off and, and you guys got you know, your first celebration there, it's obviously a little different than the, uh, the collegiate game where, uh, where there is somewhat of a goal horn, but not the train horn that rains from, uh, from the top of First Arena. What was that like yeah, to experience the first it was, time? Uh, it was really cool. It was a neat experience. I like the, uh, the Jaws theme that goes with, along with it. It's, uh, that's really fun. And uh, I was actually thinking about the other day of the goal horn, so... Um, if I can put some one back in the net, now I'll be able to hear it a lot more. Like to hear that. And that being said, obviously a couple of home games left, but a lot of time on the bus. So uh, with so many games in a row, is the kind of transition from the college game a little bit easier or harder with the amount of travel that the guys are going to do down here? Um, it's it's a bit the same. I mean, uh, um, a lot more on the road here. Uh, I know our, look at our back half. It seems like we're traveling a lot more uh, in college or weekend games. They were a bit closer, like farthest on the save is like maybe three, four hours, so and then I know we're heading up to Michigan, so that'll be a long drive, but um, now I could, it helps me get schoolwork done on the bus, as well as uh, play some games on my phone or something like that, but uh, no, it's a lot of fun on the road with the boys, and uh, Productive use of bus time, Coach. you got to be happy to hear that. He's been very productive all around since he's got here. <laughs> well, Coach, I already asked you about uh, you know, the, the recruiting and the scouting part of it. Uh, when Newman showed up here, what was the uh, what was the outlook for you? What did you expect from him? And obviously, how pleased are you with how he's uh, held himself? Obviously, you never know what to expect. The first day he was here was a, a skills day, and um, you kind of tell um, when a guy can play. And it, it's pretty obvious that he can. So it's been a tree. He does all the right things, works hard, um, goes to the dirty areas. Um, you know, just an example of people who really know hockey. The, the second goal we scored to tie the game in Danbury was him just playing the right way and back checking in the neutral zone and then making a nice play. And that's kind of sums up how he's been playing. And he's added a, a great uh, dimension to our team. So it's good, good to have him. That, uh, obviously, that's got to feel good coming from the coach, but uh, getting into the dirty areas and that, is that part of your game or something you've tried to adapt now in the pro side of it? It's, it's something that I've really started to adapt over the last last few years. I mean, um, growing up, I know that, like my childhood, like, my main playing, playing goal scoring and all that, and then as you get older, scoring tends to get harder, and once you start doing stuff that other guys don't necessarily want to do, it uh, helps the whole team out, and it's, I like it, it's fun, though. I like it. Get in the corners and all that. So. Well, you love to hear that? I'm going to get rough around a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, you heard it here first. Uh, so, obviously. Spin it up, John. This is the family network. <laughs> family network, John. <laughs> it's YouTube. Uh, <laughs> but now again, uh, I'll put this channel on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that. Uh, but last question before I let you go obviously, uh, it's an interesting time of year to, to get going, and obviously, hockey in the, the springtime is a very different time of year year to play, be playing. Uh, what's that kind of transition like playing this late into the year, and especially after playing a full college season? I mean, uh, obviously the amount of games is more, but this style of play, too, it's a little bit rougher. How do you adapt to kind of to getting yourself uh, ready to go here in Omar? Yeah, um, looking at it, I saw that if I'd be coming in and playing every game, it'd be 18 games up. Um, so that's just over half a college season. So um, I'd like to be pretty tiring for some, but... Uh, you know, when you learn the game and you're in the right spots, um, you're in the right reserving energy and time you can, that helps a lot. And you always have that 
main goal is making that playoff push. So you got the whole summer to cover, and you have days off. So if you uh, throw on the line now, you can have all of summer to cover and get back to it. And I mean, uh, transition that like first first weekend was getting used to a visor, never wore one before, but that never really uh, didn't really bother me. I see it's a lot of fun. So um, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. And uh, Trevor Newman will be back on the ice here this weekend. Looking forward to seeing you back out there. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Yes, thank you very much. Thanks, Trevor. Appreciate it, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Something about Target. I'm not really sure what that was. But anyway, <laughs> so as we wrap things up here, obviously, big couple games here. Obviously, the Danbury hat tricks right around you. I mean, you got to be looking forward to this weekend and getting things going again. You've said it all year long. You love to be playing games. Practice is no fun. Uh, how exciting is it to get into this part of the schedule and be filled with games? I mean, three and threes are always kind of uh, an exciting part of the Yeah, season. I mean, you know, and, and winning's fun. So we go into it wanting to win, and it's, it's just more fun all around, the morale and everything. So I think that game we won Sunday really, um, you know, we've had a good week of practice so far, so we just want to carry it into the weekend. Well, you've said it all season long as well. When you have a good week of practice, you see good results on the ice. So if you're saying it's been a good week of practice, the fans in Elmira should be excited. It's kind of rare, too. It's not usually like that. Usually we have a good week of a, a bad weekend. That's what I've noticed. But this team's different, as you can see. <laughs> so, uh, a little bit. Yeah, we've been good. So they just got to work hard. We've got to be more consistent. For sure. And now, obviously, one last question before I let you go. Obviously, three and three here. Uh, we've talked about how great Sammy Bernard has been. You acquired uh, Levechi there over there. You've got, uh, obviously, Frankie McClendon back there as well. Um, when you're looking at who to go with in the net, because obviously you don't want to push Frank, uh, push Sammy over the edge here too, playing three and three. Uh, what are you looking for out of the, the netminders who can take the night and get you guys yeah, out? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, we'll, we'll obviously go with Sammy on Friday and then we'll go from there. So he's feeling, like you said, yeah, you don't want to overdo it. Um, but, you know, he he likes he likes playing. So, um, you know, whatever he's comfortable with, I think we'll, we'll go with. So is that a, a more of a 90s goalie mentality that I want the net? And G games change, John. And that's what I'm saying. He's, he's, uh, <laughs> he's of the, the older age. That game was different than now. So The 90s mentality. I love, the one. love to hear it. All right, well, Tyler, I will stop bugging you. Thank you so much. Fans, don't forget you can get tickets for Saturday Night's Affair here at the Shark Tank at the First Arena by going on Ticketmaster, getting on the Ticketmaster app, or by calling the box office 607-734-PUCK and get your tickets today. And of course, don't forget that those beautiful gray jerseys you guys wore in the first half of the season are up for bid and available right now. Get on Dash Auction. Absolutely gorgeous. And some of them are pretty well trashed too. <laughs> a couple guys got into some physical stuff with those. So make sure you get on Dash Auction. Check those out. And we will see you at the Shark Tank. River Sharks Hockey, baby. Fear the fin. We'll see you. They sing. They string. Featuring the music of Legends Queen, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Metallica, The Who, and more. And best of all, they're performing at your very own first arena. Don't miss these four female violinist vocalists known as the Femmes of Rock on Friday, April 26th. Tickets for the show presented by Guthrie and the Radisson Corning are available at firstarena.net. Top of the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Saturday, March 16th, the Elmira River Sharks return to the first arena to take on the defending Commissioner's Cup champion Danbury Hatricks at 6.07 p.m. Be down to the first arena for a chance to take home one of the inaugural season jerseys from your Elmira River Sharks. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster.com or by calling the box office 607-734-POP. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fin. For more than a century, You've counted on Arnett Health, and Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do, because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients, focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. 
trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain-free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x-ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and sure smile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607-733-6825 today. All right, well, the River Sharks take to the ice here, trailing 5 nothing for the third period of play. And this is gonna be an interesting way to see this game come to an end. As I said, a little less than five days ago, the period that we are about to enter, the third period, saw three River Shark goals. And it gave Elmira not only a chance to get back into the game, it gave them the lead, and it gave them an opportunity to take three big points. As the hat tricks take to the ice now, a 5 nothing lead. And again, Connor McCullum has not seen anything get behind him. Elmira wearing the whites will skate right to left across your YouTube screen. Danbury in those green and blue reminiscent of the Whalers will have an opportunity to uh, continue to build this lead. Right now, again, 5 nothing. Cameron Yarwood over there discussing things with the official before we even get started here. Frankie McClendon back in between the pipes has not allowed anything since coming into the game. So a little bit of a feather in the cap to Frankie who the last time he was here really truly struggled against the hat tricks. Jusso is being led into the penalty box to serve his remaining 59 seconds. But McClendon a perfect 14 for 14 so far. As now again, this will be a third period to remember, to say the least, as Elmira trying to dig themselves out of this little tunnel they found themselves in. Five nothing Danbury. Danbury wins the opening draw. Back behind, Gonzalez with it, firing it along, trying to move it up quickly. It's dumped out of play. So that will get us going right back into the neutral zone. 1951 to go here. So two goals in the first for the hat tricks, three for the second period, and Elmira still failing to get on the board to this point. As the River Sharks trying to get set here, waiting for the puck drop. As a long look, Jusso, still a good 50 some seconds from being released from the box. As it looks like they are set. Puck is down, Elmira will win that draw. Back to get it goes Cody Rogers. Rogers dumps it off defensively, right back up off of Parker's stick, and that'll go all the way down. McCullum out to play, leaves it there for Xavier Abdella. Abdella, a little drop off there for Gonzalez. Gonzalez with it, trying to work that puck around. He's harassed and drops that puck for Abdella. Abdella moving it along quickly, right back out to center ice. It's Johnny Ruiz. Ruiz dumping that in as Frankie McClendon just blockers that one into the side. Again, back to McKittrick, a shot deflected up and into the netting. So 19.23 to go, it's 5-0 Danbury, and Danbury again on the attack. So the hat tricks keeping uh, their foot on the gas. They've continued to push the pace of play as Almira, who's still in desperate need of points, only a four-point lead over Watertown right now as the Wolves are not playing until Sunday this week. That puck won back by Danbury, but hustled out quickly by Elmira. Dumped all the way in. Wilson dumps that puck along. Davidson watches it go by him as it hopped over his stick. Rides a weird carom off the glass and hustled back out the other way. It's Harwell. Harwell into the zone. Moves it around the backside of the boards. De Blasio took a look but couldn't get there. Deflects off him, and now it'll be worked out the other way. Elmira with possession, floats that puck ahead into the zone. Davidson, a shot up and over the top of the netminder. Right back out to center ice where Coleman will pick it up. Coleman turns, he looks up ice quickly. Elmira has to be on the attack here. Davidson gets it ahead, throws it towards the middle, but can't quite connect as that puck's kept in the zone. Excellent work there by the River Sharks. Elijah Wilson dumping that puck off. Darius Davidson still trying to chase it back down. Jusso ready to get out of that box the minute the next whistle comes. 18.33 left to go in period number three as the bell. 
Takes a look, sends it ahead on the far side. Trying to move that puck up quickly. It goes all the way down, but no icing. As Pozar took a look and can't get there, William Berry will. Berry just flips that puck right up in the air. Almira will get it hustling out of the zone as breaking ahead. Trying to play it off was Newman. He dumps that puck in the zone. Gaeta couldn't control. McCullum back to play. He flips it out. That's going to go all the way down. The goaltender ices the puck, and that will blow the play dead. 18.05 remaining, and Dustin Gesso released from the sin bin. He will go right back onto the ice as Gesso trying to get his legs going. Gaeta, Gesso, and Newman out there as they call timeout. Timeout. Danbury? I'm very confused here. So, okay, we will step aside for 30 seconds and be right back. Not sure what this is about. Top of the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Saturday, March 16th, the Elmira River Sharks return to the first three to take on the defending Commissioner's Cup champion Danbury Hatchers at 6.07 p.m. Be down to the first three for a chance to take home one of the inaugural season jerseys from your Elmira River Sharks. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster.com or by calling the box office 607-734-POP. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fan. All right, with that, we are back. Gesso, Gaeta, Newman, Yarwood, Pozar on the backside. 18.05 to go. The River Sharks would love to get something past McCullum here. McCullum, who does have a, shoot, a shutout on the year, as they're saying they want the faceoff on the other side. It was an icing call, so it is the right of the River Sharks to demand where they want that faceoff. So it's going to come to the right-hand side of McCullum now as Gesso looks to win a draw. Gesso gets tied up. That puck bounces in deep. LaBelle trying to move it along, and he will get it to center ice where Pozar plays it. Pozar firing it along, finds Gaeta. Gaeta dumps it deep. Gesso chasing after shot and just wide of the net. Trying to move this puck up quickly. It's back in the other way. Falanga throws it through, knocked back down. Turning around to chase was Pozar, but again, it's come up with by Danbury. Back to the point. Shot towards the net, and Bedard will make this shot from the point, and the save made by Frankie McClendon. 17.40 to go here, period number three. Dustin Gesso, an excellent chance there to bury one. Just couldn't quite get it past the netminder. Sent it just a little wide. 17.40 to go. You'd love to put up a crooked number. So Almira gets set again. Puck is down, one to the sideboards, and Elmira will come up with it. Hustling back out, a little backhanded attempted pass by Coleman. Did not go the way he wanted it to. Davidson shovels it into Falanga's midsection, and they'll turn it around. Gonzalez back to his defensive partner. Abdella takes a look up ice, slides it along. Missing his target, it'll be turned around by Hedgie. Hedgie takes a look. Rolls that puck back behind as that'll be moved out by Coleman. Sent ahead. Looking for Elijah Wilson. He tries to move it, but can't. Dumped right back in, and Hedgie will turn it around. Hedgie passes it across. Flip towards center ice, and that'll get back in the Danbury zone where Gonzalez quickly turns. Gonzalez's first game since November as Wilson turns. Dumps a pass off. A look there. Shot saved by McCullum, and he will cover up. 16.54 left to go, period number three, as the River Sharks have not seen a great opportunity as of yet. Couple of shots coming here in the third period, but nothing really to write home about since that Gesso opportunity. So we will see again as the River Sharks trying to get something done here. As they wait, puck is about to be dropped. And that is down and one back. Elmira could not control. Back to center ice to get it. It's Pozar. Pozar off the boards. Ruiz turns it right back around and dumps it in. Frankie McClendon back to play. McClendon moves it around. Back up the sideboards to Brett Parker. Parker back behind. Trying to slide that one ahead. Elmira gets it to the neutral zone, but again, fails to connect on the pass. Dumped right back in, and Frankie McClendon will club that one down. 5 nothing in favor of the Danbury Hattricks, and again, a lot of work still to go as the River Sharks trying to find their way back in here. So, Elmira back to the drawing board. 
See if Tyler George came up with anything in that intermission. As Jusso back here ready to take the draw. 16-28 remains. Puck is dropped, one back by Jusso. Yarwood wraps it around the boards. Newman trying to get free and he is tied up. The stick taken right out of his hand and back behind to LaBelle. LaBelle whiffs on the pass, but again gets it back behind. LaBelle still with possession, 16-10 left to go in period number three. LaBelle looks up ice, passes it across, trying to move it out quickly. It's turned around by Woolley. Woolley flips it ahead and that's chopped out of the air by Yarwood, couldn't come up with it as Harwell breaks in. Harwell towards the front, shoot! Back again, an attempt, and that's gonna be gloved down, but that will be a delayed penalty on the hold as Bedard was held onto. Pozar and his matching number kept separate. As now they come back together, the linesman trying to get in between them. Almira is gonna go back to the penalty kill. So, more pushing and shoving. I'm not sure what's going on. The crowd's getting riled up. As I guess because Jusso's back in the penalty box. I'm very confused. All right, well. 15.55 to go. It's a power play for Danbury. Uh, they're already up 5-0, so Almira needs to come up with a kill, and they do get that one right out of the zone and all the way down. Excellent face-off win there. So, back to get it, McCollum. Leaves that puck along. Hustled back out the other way, it's McKittrick. Moving it along for Ruiz. And that's what the fans cheering about. Ruiz with it, turning around, looking back. Keeps it himself, passes across the bell. Top of the circle, shot, deflected, and that goes back behind the net. Frankie McClendon didn't know where it was. Back behind, it's Cunningham. Cunningham back to the point again. Some trouble for LaBelle, but he manages to keep that blue line pretty solidly as that puck's back down low. Harwell moves it along. Back to the point to LaBelle. LaBelle walks the line, passes to McKittrick. Back to LaBelle, right at the center of the blue line. Shot deflected into the corner again, and that hit off his own player. Back behind, back to LaBelle. LaBelle passes it off. Ruiz looking back down low towards the front shot, save, turned aside, and that ends up in the back of the net. Frankie McClendon not happy at all. And I believe that's going to be Cunningham's third. Fourteen fifty-nine left to go in this one. So Cunningham is going to get the hat trick as the fans litter the Danbury ice. There's a puck over there too. Cunningham appreciates the recognition. Frankie McClendon staring up at the board. As again, fourteen fifty-nine remains here in the third period and it's now six nothing. So we'll get a look at the replay here now. now. I'm not gonna get a good look at it up here. As that puck does come loose and is chipped into the net. But again, Elmira was not happy with that. Frankie McClendon sure thought he had made that save. So six nothing in favor of the Danbury Hattricks as the fans serenade former Hattrick Frankie McClendon. As now faceoff comes here, right back at center ice. Puck is dropped, one back by Danbury. Gonzalez with it, passes across. As the Hattricks continue to attack, poke check there and work back towards the offensive zone. Falanga will chase, Coleman gonna get there. Six, nothing in favor of Danbury, trying to move this puck out. It's flipped away. Shot back and picked off again. Shot goal! And that makes it seven to nothing. As Di Nicola gets his second of the night. And Frankie McClendon is serenaded yet again. The officials coming in to look at something now. I'm not sure what. 
So we'll wait to see what they're reviewing. I'm not 100% sure what they are looking at. As the fans right behind the bench are giving a, uh, a nice cheer to Dustin Jusseau. So, the officials in the penalty box, and they'll be looking at this, some something on this. I'm not 100% sure what exactly they're reviewing. But as I said, Frankie McClendon now has given up two here tonight. As now, here's a look at the replay. Again, I'm not 100% sure what they're looking at. As the puck is down, maybe it's offsides? They started much further back this time. I imagine it's possible, but you'd have to go even further back than that. It started in the zone. So I don't know what they're looking at. Uh, they're talking about a hand pass, apparently. So I guess we'll wait to see. As now the official comes out of the box and good goal. So it is 7-0. 1440 left to go here in the third period. And again, Almira struggling without their top goal scorer, Stephen Klink, and their number one netminder, Sammy Bernard, who has been stellar. As now they're going to keep play going here. 14.40 remaining, and the River Sharks trailing seven Cobb as that puck dropped. One back, LaBelle has possession as this is going to give the Danbury Hattricks a big win over Elmira as that puck's dumped back to center ice. Hustling after it is Gaeta. Can't get there. It's turned around one more time. Bedard has it. Now Hedgie drops the gloves and starts to go. He and Bedard tied up. Hedgie is wailing on Bedard. He got three or four good ones before the referees got in there. Hedgie came right at him. And Bedard has words for Hedgie right now. So Hedgie will go to the penalty box as will Bedard. So Hedgie. The fans booing, I believe, because Hedgie got the better of that, that exchange. 14-16 left to go here, period three. I believe we're finally going to step aside for that media timeout. We'll be back after this. Seven, nothing in favor of the Danbury Hattricks. They sing, they string. Featuring the music of Legends Queen, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Metallica, The Who, and more. And best of all, they're performing at your very own first arena. Don't miss these four female violinist vocalists known as the Femmes of Rock on Friday, April 26th. Tickets for the show presented by Guthrie and the Radisson Corning are available at firstarena.net. Top of the circle, waiting, shooting, goal! Hockey is back. Saturday, March 16th, the Elmira River Sharks return to the first arena to take on the defending Commissioner's Cup champion Danbury Hattricks at 6.07 p.m. Be down to the first arena for a chance to take home one of the inaugural season jerseys from your Elmira River Sharks. Get your tickets online on Ticketmaster.com or by calling the box office 607-734-POP. River Sharks Hockey. Fear the fin. All right, well, there was some signal about a fight strap, which I believe they were trying to make sure. Somebody had, I'm not sure what's going on. Somebody apparently has to go to the box. I'm assuming another power play. Yeah, there it is. Two minutes up on the board for a team leading seven to nothing. Looks like Brett Parker will serve the minor. So, Again, a power play for Danbury, because of course it is. 14-16 left to go, and it's a 7-0 game. So I believe it's going to be for Aggressor. We'll wait to see what plays out here. 
Again, these two teams will meet again tomorrow night at the Shark Tank as that puck is dropped. One back is Wilson. Wilson has possession, trying to work it up ahead. Wilson trying to get free, and he does eventually get it out, trying to flip it ahead to Davidson, but it's turned around just as quickly. Again, Elmira on the kill here for the next minute 45. 14 minutes to go in the third period. Flipping that one ahead. Rushing it out is McKittrick. McKittrick into the offensive zone. He looks for a lane, turns around. Has it taken away from him, but it's picked up by LaBelle. Sent into the corner as de Blasio trying to get there and cannot. Back behind. Played off here. McKittrick passes it towards the slot. Broken up by Almira. Flipped towards center ice. And Darius Davidson will hustle it out. Has just LaBelle to be and does. Davidson in. Looking shot off the post. As that'll be turned around by LaBelle. LaBelle with it. Back out the other way. Into the zone. Dumping that puck down deep. LaBelle misses it. As de Blasio gets it off the boards and back out to center ice. Minute four left to go in the power play. As that one's sent through by Ruiz. LaBelle has it. Ruiz racing towards the net. Dump back off. A shot. And that's over the top of the net. Back towards the front. Broken up. And again it bounces around. Fake shot there from Elmira. As that's sent out of the zone. And Dumas couldn't come up with it. Played off. Hustling back in. Here comes Peavy. He's got a man. Flips across and couldn't get it to settle down. Dumas was looking. As again, trying to hustle this puck back out. It's Barry. Moving it back behind. 30 seconds to go on the man advantage. Ratcliffe. Back the other way. Ratcliffe with it. 12.40 to go here in the third period. Ratcliffe turning all the way around. Power play still 20 seconds remaining. Moved out of the zone and played out. Almira needs a line change, something fierce. Back into the zone comes Danbury. Flipping that puck now back to center ice as Pamelayan has it. Pamelayan looks up ice. Newman harassing him. Flipped ahead as that's dumped back in. Back to get it. De Blasio sends that 200 feet. Now the River Sharks trying to attack as McCullum drops it for Pamelayan. Pamelayan still with it, looking. He's harassed there by Newman, but Pamelayan still works it through the neutral zone. Lifted stick and turned back around by Jusso. Jusso taken down, and that's going to be a penalty as that one's touched up. I think that's going to go against the hat tricks. As yes, it does look like it will as the power play just expired. And now Almira's going to get a power play opportunity of their own with 12.04 to go. Pamela in. Gets a two-minute minor. I'm not sure what happened with our clock there on YouTube. I apologize. 12.04 remaining. And it's now a power play opportunity for Almira. 7-0 in favor of the hat tricks right now. As the Myra River Sharks try to put something in the back of the net. Wilson getting set here, 12.04 remains. Puck is dropped, one back by Elmira. Yarwood has it, swaps places with Jusso. Jusso winds, fires, and that goes just wide. Back out and all the way down as out to play it, Frankie McClendon. Moves that puck along, Yarwood with it now. Cameron Yarwood behind his own net, under 12 minutes remaining here in the third period, moved ahead. Trying to hustle it ahead, it's Elijah Wilson sidestepping a check. Into the zone it goes, moved ahead, it's Trevor Newman. Newman looking towards the front, takes it back behind, wrap around towards the front and couldn't get it to go. As again, that puck flipped out all the way back down as Frankie McClendon stops it. And there's a penalty coming up here. Slashing gonna be the call and it's gonna go against Elmira. So that'll kill off the rest of the minute 26 of power play time as Elijah Wilson not happy with that. So, face-off will come all the way back in the River Shark territory. Four-on-four four hockey. Seven-nothing hat-tricks. As, once again, shots on goal, 37-26 to 26 in favor of Danbury. As now they get the fourth man out there. It's going to be Pozar and Yarwood. Looks like Dumas and Gaeta up front. The River Sharks will be kicked out of the faceoff circle, so Gaeta is going to have to take the draw. Gaeta waits, pushes that puck to the sideboard, picked up there by Yarwood and sent back low for Pozar. Pozar turns around. Pozar takes a look, moves it up to Dominic Dumas, back to Pozar quickly. Pozar looks ahead, passed across for Yarwood, banks off a skate. Yarwood turning it around. Cameron Yarwood sidesteps a check into the zone. Offensively trying to play that off and could not. Back behind. It's rolled up the sideboards to Falanga. Three on two. Passed wide. LaBelle into the zone. LaBelle taking a look. Shoots. Save. 
Huge stop once again by Frankie McClendon. 10.58 left to go here. As the River Sharks still looking for something to go their way. They have yet to find the back of the net. Couple of post opportunities, a couple of great saves by McCollum, but certainly don't want him to take home another SO. As they wait, puck is dropped, one back. Elmira with possession, trying to work it along. It's de Blasio. Sent around the boards. Turning back around now is Coleman. Coleman looks. Passes back to de Blasio. De Blasio looking out towards center ice. De Blasio hustling it along. Gisso pairs up with him. They'll slide along as it's moved ahead. De Blasio knocked down hard and back behind. Trevor Newman chasing after it. Trying to knock it down and cannot. Puck is played out. Trying to move it along. Abdella gets cut off. Newman back to the point. Shot! Gisso couldn't get it to go. Gisso was taken down. And he is up immediately yelling for a trip. Not going to get it. Move back out. It's Woolley. Woolley with it now. Trying to play it off. A big hit there by Gisso. Puck picked off by Gisso now as he turns it around. Harassed with a couple of whacks there. Still no call. Woolley. Now the call is coming. Gisso into the zone. Still trying to work his way through. Pass through to the front. Shot! And can't get it to go. That'll finally be blown dead. As with 10.01 to go, Gisso has the call coming. He'll go to the bench. And that's got to be two minutes against Danbury. Ruiz out to argue. It's going to be Woolley going to the box. And I don't know what he can argue about. He was cross-checking him seven or eight times. I think that's the case. Yeah, there's the cross-checking show. So with 10.01 to go, again, I'm not really sure what the argument was from Woolley. So the last 31 seconds of Danbury's power play will be negated as Yarwood over to talk to the official too. So, faceoff comes back down to the right-hand side of McCollum. Timeout, Elmira at this point. So I guess we'll step aside for another 30 seconds and we'll be back after this. For more than a century, you've counted on Arnett Health and Arnett has counted on you too. You're our community, our purpose, our passion. You're the reason we do what we do because giving our patients the best of ourselves is just who we are. Staying on the cutting edge while staying connected to our patients, focusing on state-of-the-art procedures and the most effective care. That's why we're here. It's who we are. It's what we do. All right, so the timeout's come and gone. The Elmira River Sharks called timeout to attempt to get themselves Situated and organized. Gisso is over there to talk to the official for a second. It's four on four hockey for the next 31 seconds. So with 10.01 to go, Elmira trying to find a way past McCollum, something they haven't done yet so far. The netminder has a shutout going for him. And yes, I'm trying to hit the broadcaster jinx and break that up real quick here. Would love to see Dustin Gesso get rewarded. He has been all around it here tonight. Puck is dropped. One back. LaBelle with possession. Harassed by Cody Rogers as that one sent around the boards. Trying to move this puck up quickly. A long look. It's Ratcliffe hustling that puck down deep as back to get it goes Coleman. Coleman off the boards and right back around. Right back to Ratcliffe as a matter of fact. 15 seconds to go on the kill. Or on the 4 on 4. I'm sorry about the clock again. We'll get that fixed next stoppage of play. Ratcliffe still with it. Back to the point to LaBelle. Winds, fire, save Frankie McClendon. As now again, a delayed penalty coming. LaBelle winds, fires, broken up, as that one will be touched. So with 9.33 to go, another penalty to the River Sharks. As they'll separate everything here, we'll go to the final media, well, excuse me, the second media timeout of the third period. And when we come back, 7-0. Hattricks have the lead. The River Sharks will go back to the penalty box. And stay tuned, folks, because who knows what's going to happen here, and it'll carry over till tomorrow. We'll be back after this, 7-0, Danbury.
Trust your smile to Elmira Family Dentistry, the best dental care in the region. Their wand STA anesthesia system provides a pain-free way to take care of any dental problem. Their latest digital x-ray systems provide a highest standard diagnostic record. Elmira Family Dentistry offers routine and deep cleanings, fillings and bonding, crowns, implants, root canals, and sure smile orthodontics. Elmira Family Dentistry at 311 West Church Street in Elmira. Call 607-733-6825 today. Ready for a financial blow up? Look no further than Ingersoll Rand Federal Credit Union. We've got great rates for your life. Whether it's for your dream home or a new ride, we've got your back. Easily access your IRFCU accounts with our mobile app. View balances, deposit checks, and move money with just a tap. Your money, your way. Here at IRFCU, we are committed to our community through our financial education programs in schools and free financial counseling for members in need. We're building a stronger community together. All right, well, welcome back in as uh, we have gone dark here for a moment. We certainly hope to have that corrected for you here before too long. But we will go radio style here on the broadcast. So 9.33 to go as that puck is dropped. Danbury with the manpower advantage. That's now over. McKittrick with it, moving it along the boards. Throwing it, looking for a spot to throw it towards the... Net, but again, four on four hockey. LaBelle with a shot, deflected just wide. Frankie McClendon swatting at it. The puck comes loose and right back onto a Danbury stick. Back towards the point, Ruiz back down low. Hopping around as that puck's moved back out. And finally, Elmira gets it out of the zone. Two on one if they hurry. Into the zone they come, passed across, towards the middle shot, off the post again to Blasio. Had an excellent chance. Back out the other way, it's Ruiz. Ruiz into the zone, drops a pass for LaBelle. LaBelle across. Can't get that one to go. De Blasio chasing after, but can't get there. Back to the point. McKittrick back down low again. Ruiz has that one swiped away. And again, Harwell with a shot deflected up and into the netting. So with 8.46 left to go, still four on four hockey for another 44 seconds. As the first combatant from the fight is officially released. And the hat tricks banking their sticks. As... 44 seconds for the next 44 sec. excuse me, four on four hockey for the next 44 seconds. There we go. Back for it goes Pozar. Elmira wins the draw, back behind, trying to work this puck up ice quickly. They would love to put one in the back of the net. They need something to build on for tomorrow. Looking ahead, Coleman across to Pozar. Pozar dumping that in, it goes all the way around as McCollum leaves it back behind for Kyle Gonzalez. Again, his first game back since November. Gonzalez trying to work this puck around. He dumps that puck off and again turned around. Here comes Danbury back out the other way, throwing that puck to the neutral zone where it's picked off, and now Davidson turns it around. Davidson back in the zone, looking, puts a shot on it, goes into the corner as that puck picked off and moved around for Abdella. Abdella with it, working it along again. As it appears, we're back live on the YouTube feed. Puck moving back along, Danbury. Big hit there right in front of the bench, and they're looking for a call, and they have thrown the gauntlet down and are attacking everyone in here. Big hit right in front of the bench, and Woolley went right after Davidson, and he is not going to take too kindly to that. Davidson is on the ground. Slow to get back up. Woolley is revving up the crowd. Gonzalez being ushered off. They're sending Davidson, I think, to the locker room as well. So Davidson will be run to the room. 7.57 to go. The man down was William Berry. I don't see any blood on the ice. And Billy McCreary is letting it go at the Elmira River Shark bench. So McCreary still harping on the River Shark bench. The officials coming together. McCreary is losing his mind. Still making gestures at Tyler Jurich. I don't know what all that was about. But with 7.57 to go in the third period, it's 7-0 Danbury. We'll see how this all shakes out. As I said, 24 seconds remaining in a power play right now. Cody Rogers over trying to get an explanation. 
a bunch of players made their way to the locker room. If you're Elmira, you still got to finish this game off. You've got to find a way to get something done here. As players chirping back and forth still. And Billy McCreary being admonished by the linesman and pointing at the Elmira bench. I'm not sure why. Elmira's bench is short already. Tyler Jurich far down the bench. Stavros Soilis there as well. As is assistant coach MJ Merkel. Waiting to see what all of this comes down from. As there's still a lot of discussion here. Jusso is on the bench now and he's certainly willing, ready and able. 7.57 to go here in the third period. Again the score, seven to nothing. As now McCreary and Jusso having words. Billy McCreary certainly running off at the mouth a considerable amount. And now Jusso pointing at McCreary. So, Ruiz Rogers over there looking for explanations, I assume, as Yarwood still 24 seconds away from getting released. Hedgy should be out of the bench here shortly, and I'm sure he's going to face repercussions for his fight earlier. Ruiz still chatting with the official. As now, one of the referees headed back towards the bench. And we'll see what's going on. I think he's just going to try to restore some order here. As far too much conversation going between the two benches here. As now, Rogers getting the explanation. Still nothing on the board. So I don't know if there is any actual penalties to be assessed here. What I do know is this is dragging on this game when they're going to play 6.07 tomorrow. I'll say it again. The River Sharks down a number of their top players, including Sammy Bernard, and I apologize again about the clock there, and Stephen Klink not available in the lineup tonight. Kyle Powell not in the lineup tonight. This is going to be a very different team tomorrow night. So Danbury's taking their shots right now while they can get them. I will be very surprised if they're able to continue taking these liberties. Wow, five minute major to Darius Davidson. We'll have to wait and see what that officially is called because I have to be honest, I don't know how that's gonna shake out here. Because if that's five in a game, it is presumable that Darius Davidson would not be available tomorrow, but I, again, Davidson, not that style of player. He's not an aggressive player. He threw a hit, and again, I don't know. We'll wait to see what that gets tossed down as, but very surprised uh, as far as I'm concerned. And now we'll see. The fans are all around the River Shark bench, and they are letting Dustin Gesso have it. I'm not 100% sure, again, where this comes from, but... Again, still a lot going on here as Billy McCreary making signals here. It appears as though William Berry will hype up the crowd. He takes a celebratory lap and they're gonna send Barry to the room it looks like. So Barry, it looked like the referee told him to go. Is he going to the penalty box? No, he's telling him to go right to the room. Not 100% sure why. Barry obviously took the initial hit. Barry appears to be okay. Which again, that's great news. And he's still hyping up the crowd as if they needed anything more. But long and short of it, it's another five-minute major power play 
for the Hattricks, who already have a 7-0 lead, and now they'll be 5-on-3 for the 24 seconds until Yarwood gets out. So this is going to be a long last eight minutes of this game. 5-on-3 for 24 seconds, and again, that five minutes is a major, so score at will if you're Danbury. Puck is dropped, one back. LaBelle gets it. LaBelle looking as the clock did not start. So timeout was apparently called by the penalty clock, which, again, no, the penalty will be on Elmira for something else now. Parker goes over. We'll wait to see. So, puck is dropped. One back by Danbury, but immediately picked off there by de Blasio, trying to move it ahead. Had some trouble as LaBelle cuts it off. Pass across. 7.45 left to go in the third period. Seven to nothing in favor of the hat tricks. As that's passed across, big windup shot and a save. Frankie McClendon. So, 7.40 left to go here in period number three as the River Sharks once again trying to get it back to five on four hockey as again Cameron Yarwood will be released in six seconds pass back McKittrick with it back again to LaBelle LaBelle winds fires and that one's just wide rides the rails Yarwood not able to get out because the two minute minor penalty comes up as that will be blown dead so we are now still at five on three for an entire two minutes And the referee over to explain something to the official. Or excuse me, the official over to explain something to Tyler Jurich. So, 7.28 to go, five on three power play. And pretty much score at will for Danbury as LaBelle swaps sides. Passes down low, looking back towards LaBelle. LaBelle with it, passes across, and again down low one more time trying to get this set up. Pozar, the man out high, shot goes up and into the netting. So with 7.13 to go, the River Sharks have another defensive zone draw. As that will finally release Hedgy, and he will go back to the bench. So, 7 nothing hat trick, 7.13 to go, still 4.15 to go in the major penalty as the referee heading back to the penalty box. So nobody ever came over to serve the five minute major, which is what the referee is gonna go tell the bench. They need somebody to serve the five minute major. So, Parker is over here and he's bashing on the boards. Looks like Gaeta's gonna go to serve the major. So again, here we go. Minute 39 to go in the Parker penalty. Gaeta goes to serve the major penalty. Five on three continues for the next 99 seconds. As now again, puck is dropped. Tied up, one back. De Blasio trying to wrap it around the boards and can't. De Blasio is still trying to kick it through as that one is tied up. Worked along the boards, Danbury sets it back to LaBelle. LaBelle, back down low again as they try to set it up. Back to the point, a shot off a knee pad of Peavy. Back to LaBelle now. LaBelle, looking, throws that to the sideboards as once again they look to set it up. Towards the middle shot, save Frankie McClendon. So, 6.49 to go here. And again, sorry about the clock. We'll let that get fixed for you. My apologies again. So, legal head contact was a match penalty. Five for fighting. As we get set here. As puck dropped, one back. Playing it out as Coleman, trying to wrap it around. Could not. Back to the point. A long look. Back to the point, it's Ratcliffe. Back down low again, trying to set this back up. A pass across. Shot, deflected off a leg. Trying to chop it away, but could not come up with it. It's back behind. Everybody back there digging. As again, it's moved back to Ratcliffe at the point. Ratcliffe with it, looking, shooting, and that's turned aside again. 
right off the top and back to Pamelayan. Passed across again as they look to set it up. Back to Pamelayan. Pamelayan walks the blue line. Top of the slot, passes back down low. Back to the top, shot, Ratcliffe shoots and scores. <laughs> That is eight nothing hat tricks. So that will expire the rest of the Brett Parker penalty as Frankie McClendon needs a new goal stick. He is not happy. So eight nothing in favor of the hat tricks and again five on four power play for the remaining three minutes and 12 seconds so power play about to take off here again as the river sharks look to win a draw i don't know what's going on here the official and the linesman having a conversation 6.09 to go. Eight to nothing in favor of Danbury. Johnny Ruiz talking with his head coach as one official chats with a linesman. As we'll wait to see what this is all about, the two referees are going to come together now. It is an eight to nothing hockey game. The amount of conversations going on is just getting a bit ridiculous. Let's just get this clock back moving. Both of these teams play at 6.07 tomorrow night in Elmira. They're gonna kick Frankie McClendon right out of the game. McClendon is irate. McClendon is going right towards the linesman. He is not happy. Frankie McClendon being tossed from the game. So that's going to... That is going to require that Almira puts Levecci back in. So Levecci will get his helmet and equipment and we'll go back into this game. I mean, 6.09 to go. And now the referee is calling for them to drop the puck. Levecci not back even in his goal crease yet. This is unbelievable. All right, well, 6.09 remaining. So, puck ready to be dropped. As they're gonna pull everybody back here. We'll see why, I'm not 100% sure what they're doing. Oh, I think Elmira might be refusing this here. Yeah, Tyler Jurich is absolutely irate. And he wants to talk with the official and the official is not having any of it as Tyler Jurich, Jurich is gone now. Tyler Jurich has been run. This is out of hand, 6.09 to go. Jurich is being ejected from the game. So Jurich makes his way to the room. This has been unbelievable as this puck dropped. One back by Danbury, who's still on a power play, by the way. Three minutes and five seconds left to go in the man advantage. As hustling back out, here comes the hat tricks. LaBelle with it. Sent ahead. Ruiz couldn't handle it. It's moved back deep. McKittrick gets there, but Pozar cuts him off. Ruiz gets there and tries to throw one past the netminder. Again, has been out of the game for a long while at this point. Back to the point now. 2.46 to go. Another penalty coming here. Ruffing going to be the call. Who's this one against? Who knows? It's four on four, apparently again, as now Danbury will go to the box. The Hattricks want to argue. The Hattricks goaltender had gone to the bench thinking it was a penalty on the River Sharks. 
This is, this is by far one of the strangest matchups I have seen in a long, long time. As now just so comes out, 542 remaining. Just so, Dumas, Yarwood, and Pozar out here to play four on four hockey. Dumas waiting. Puck is dropped, one back. Yarwood gets it, Pozar has it. Pozar back to Yarwood. Yarwood trying to settle it down. Passed across to Pozar. Pozar back to Yarwood. Winds, fires, deflected just wide. Backhands in the net. Dustin just so ends the shutout bid and makes it eight to one. And the fans here in Danbury not happy at all about that. So it's very little to take pride in for Almira, but they snap the shutout bid. Four on four hockey, and just so right back out here again. So four on four hockey continues. Tied up in the official skate as Harwell gets it back into the offensive zone. Missing that one, thrown towards the net as Lavecchi turns it aside. Lavecchi back in the game now. For those of you who might have stepped away for a second, half the team seems to have gone to the locker room. Pozar dumps it right back in. McCollum couldn't handle He dumps that puck right back out, and Yarwood will turn and chase, including head coach Tyler Jurich is in the room now as well. Back behind, trying to move this puck along. It's Pozar moving it ahead. He dumps it in. McCollum couldn't handle. Left there in the slot. Back to Jesso, who couldn't get it back to Pozar. Back out the other way. Danbury trying to set it up. We're under five minutes to go now as that's passed across. Into the offensive zone, shot turned aside again there by Lavecchi. Trying to swat at it, but Danbury keeps the zone instead. Right towards the middle, a shot turned aside towards the net, and Lavecchi comes up with the save. That should take us to the final media timeout, which I don't know if we need it. We've had enough stoppages, but that will be the final media timeout of this one. We'll be back after this. Eight to one, Danbury. At Callier's, we take pride in delivering great barbecue every day. Our slow-cooked, smoky-flavored home cooking is a favorite among young and old. From signature spare ribs and baby back ribs to brisket and chicken. But did you know that Callier's caters too? We offer a full range of catering options to suit any event. From wedding and corporate events to graduation parties, retirement and backyard barbecues, and pig roasts. If you have an event coming up, give us a call. We're now booking for the 2024 season. At Callier's, we do great barbecue. And that's just the beginning. Call today and book your next event with Raya at 570-888-2927 for Calliers. It's a place of extraordinary education. It's where heroes begin. And potential is realized. A place of purpose and dedication. A devotion to learning, to pushing the boundaries of our understanding of medicine. It's our purpose, our mission, to prepare our students for the uncertain future, to keep asking new questions, to find new answers. This is LECOM. We make doctors. It's time to get to work. All right, eight to one as the puck is dropped. Dustin Gesso was the River Sharks goal so far as now it's moved out. 432 left to go. Hustled back to center ice where LaBelle cuts it off. Sending it right back in for Cunningham who has a hat trick on the night. Cunningham drops it back. Shot by Ruiz is off of Pozar and he is crumpled down trying to get back to his feet. He's up Move back behind, Ruiz works it around to LaBelle, back for Ruiz, back to the point again. Trying to set this up, Abdella passes across, Cunningham with a shot and it's way wider than that. Ruiz back down low as Yarwood puts him into the boards. Trying to flip it off, Cunningham comes up with it, Ruiz with the wraparound attempt and can't get it to go. Back behind, Almira will chase it down, Dumas back down. Trying to play it off, it's again into the corner. 14 seconds to go in the Danbury penalty, still a minute to go in that major. That was called against Darius Davidson, Dumas dumps it in. Back into the zone it comes. Cody Rogers with it, looking, waiting, turns around. Back again, Rogers. Still circling, first penalty over, that's the Danbury penalty. Rogers with it, passes it along for Yarwood. Yarwood dumps it back down deep. Nobody there for it as Doom is gonna go for a change. 35 seconds of a kill remaining. It's a major penalty. 30 seconds to go. Danbury's already tallied once and pushed off with a little bit of an elbow there from my vantage point. A shot again saved by Lavecchi. As with three minutes, 20 seconds to go, it is eight to one. This game is basically over. I mean, there's no other way to say it. But 
eight to one Danbury, and this game is going to continue on tomorrow night at 6:07 p.m. at the First Arena. And if this is any sign of things to come, you are not going to want to miss that. So get your tickets on Ticketmaster or Ticketmaster.com. One back as again playing it through. Bedard has it. Shot comes deflected just wide. Bedard will chase it in. 15 seconds to go on the power play. 3:10 to go in the period. Back again, trying to work this puck around. Henning sends it wide, looking for the lane. Power play just about coming to an end. Bedard's trying to settle that puck down as that puck is dumped off. Back behind as we're back to five on five hockey. Shot is saved by Levecchi. Back behind, it's PV again. PV trying to get free. Can't come up with it as again, it works through some legs. Harwell couldn't get it either. Work towards the front as that's broken up. And now Almira will turn it around. It's Davide Galleta with it. Gaeta trying to get free, but he's roughed into the boards. Still trying to work it ahead and can't clear the zone. Harwell with it now, looking, shooting over the top of the net. Right back to the side, and that will be covered up by Lavecchi. 2.28 left to go. And the River Sharks make a line change. Gonzalez finally freed from the penalty box as well. 2.28 to go, and we're back to five on five. For how long, who knows? But this one has been... To call it extreme would not be, not be inaccurate. I'll tell you that right now, folks. Puck is dropped, one back by Danbury, and trying to set it back up, it's Tetro dumping that puck down deep. Back behind, it's rolled up the sideboards again. Tetro will take it again, keeping that puck in the zone, and again, right back to the blue line, but again, just dumping it down deep. Yarwood is there for it. Wraps it around for Pozar. 2.10 left to go in the third. Rolls that puck along. Yarwood has it. Dump back off, Pozar. Pozar fires it through the neutral zone, but it's knocked down there by Falanga. Falanga flips it ahead, and that will be played down deep. Pozar finds it, passes across. It's Yarwood. Yarwood has possession, trying to work it back out. Cameron Yarwood through the red line, works his way into the zone. Yarwood still with it, looking, trying to get around. He's taken off as that puck is worked back out by Danbury. The hat trick's rushing back out the other way. It's Ratcliffe with it. Ratcliffe into the zone, passes across. Falanga couldn't calm it down as that puck flutters around right in front of the crease. A shot save. And again, Danbury still chasing offense. Passed across, shot saved by Lavecchi. And that's a huge one for him. 122 to go in this game. So the shots on goal tell the story. 50 to 33. As Almira has to go back to work here. Face off to the right hand side of the netminder. Lovecchi again, not the start he wanted in an Elmira River Shark uniform. Puck is one to the sideboards. Picking it up, trying to hustle it ahead. Gaeta dumps it off. Picked off and into the zone on side. Gaeta chasing LaBelle, slaps that to the opposite blue line. Back again, hustled ahead for Wilson. Wilson. Gets that puck in the zone, it's Gaeta with it. Passes across towards the front shot and can't get it to go, Peavy was right there. As again, that puck worked back behind. It's Gonzalez pinned to the boards, taken away from him. Trying to work it along, but it goes right back to him. Gonzalez gets it, rolls that back to center ice as that'll be knocked back down. 45 seconds remaining. Into the offensive zone, but nobody there in a white jersey. Easy to move it out for Di Nicola. De Blasio chasing. As Pamela Ann turns around in his own zone, 35 seconds, back through the neutral zone now. Shot, turned wide. Chasing it back, it's Trevor Newman. Newman rolls it along the boards, trying to push it through and cannot. Dump back off and down low. Back behind, in the slot, shot, saved again. Trying to move it around, it's 18 seconds to go. Almira still looking for a little bit to add to their cap as they're going right back into action with these hat tricks tomorrow night. Played off. Coleman fires it off the boards, back to center. Knocked down there by Gaeta. Moved ahead, playing it ahead, but unable to control, and that is going to do it. So Elmira will head home as they will go back to play the same Danbury hat tricks tomorrow night. This will continue tomorrow night at the First Arena, live in the Shark Tank, as Elmira trying to find an answer. Not the way they wanted this one to go, but they fall 8-1 to one 
Dustin Jusseau, the lone goal. Take a quick look around the out-of-town scoreboard. Binghamton comes up winners 9-1 over Mississippi. The Port Huron Prowlers win 4-2 over the Motor City Rockers. And the Carolina Thunderbirds come back to win against the Blue Ridge Bobcats 4-2. The River Sharks fall 8-1. And ladies and gentlemen, there's not much to sum up. Two goals in the first, three goals in the second, and three more in the third for the hat tricks. A late goal from Dustin Jusso, and that was it. The River Sharks fall eight to one as Almira trying to find themselves a way into the playoffs. They'll have to do it tomorrow night as they take on the hat tricks in Elmira. You've been listening to River Shark Hockey here on Mixler.com and live on YouTube. I'm John Clement. Good night, Elmira. We'll see you tomorrow at the Shark Tank.